This is the Hagman and Hagman Report for today, a very special Saturday edition. Today is May 11th, 2013. This is a live broadcast. I'm Doug Hagman, co-host of my son, Joe Hagman. We're both in studio tonight. Together we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. Tonight we've got a very special program. We are, in fact, one of the few programs that uh, take a different approach to news information, the white noise of headlines that we all see out there, and we view, we analyze what's taking place through Bible prophecy, through the prism of biblical scripture. You're really listening to the only show on the internet where news is presented to you in 3D fashion as well. We do look beyond the headlines and bylines and bring you the news that is behind the news. Now, tonight, our special program includes two very special people that we are humbled to know, brothers in Christ, warriors for the truth. Mr. Steve Quayle, international author, best-selling author, by the way, and one of our great, great friends, and also Pastor David Langford, voice of evangelism the voice of evangelism.com both of their websites are linked off of our home base which is homelandsecurityus.com now normally we broadcast live each and every weeknight from 8 to 11 p.m. eastern time of course tonight is an exception it's a very special broadcast it was a result of what is on pastor langford's heart Welcome, gentlemen, and uh, we're going to turn this over to Steve uh, because um, he's the master. We're, we're, we're going to elect him tonight as master of ceremonies, if you will. Steve, are you with us? Yes, thank you. I'm excited tonight, and I'm excited to have Pastor David Langford with us because tonight we're going to share, David's going to share uh, the word that the Lord gave him out of, I believe, Ezekiel 13. But I want to open tonight with the word of God, First Timothy chapter 4, because we're going to talk about seduction and deception and it comes out of first timothy four. now the spirit which is a holy spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils we're told that in john first john we're to try the spirits brother we're to try them and to see whether they be up from the Lord or not. And, and let me read that, too. And then I'm going to turn it over to David. First John 4, 1 through 3 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they have God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And is, this is the very spirit of Antichrist, where have ye of heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world and what's important that's for people to understand tonight is is that god is, is admonishing us actually john the beloved is admonishing us under the influence of the holy spirit that we are to try the spirits and this is why it's critical to have foundational understanding of the Word of God, because it doesn't matter what I think, it doesn't matter what Pastor Langford thinks, it matters what the Word declares, because that is our ultimate standard, that is our plumb line. And so we're going to go into this tonight, because again, people don't understand what the doctrine of devils is. You have to have a presentation that you receive presented that is close enough to the truth that can deceive you. And seduction always has as its basis, a promise of pleasure. Let's not look beyond that that immediate thought. And, and it's critical that people understand. You cannot be seduced if you are not, first and foremost, pleasure-oriented. And people want to have, as the Scripture says, itching ears. That's why talk radio, and, and especially chat rooms, and with all due respect, Doug, you know my contempt for chat rooms, so I'll just leave it there. But the point is, is that people need to read the Bibles, they need to cry out for God to give them wisdom and understanding, and to know how to discern the times, the days are evil. So I'm going to turn it over to Pastor, because we're going to talk about two key words, seduction, we're going to talk about deception, we're going to talk about false prophets and prophetesses. It's going to be really easy, Doug, before I went on the air, and David, just a few minutes ago, probably ten minutes ago, the Lord said, Steve, 
when you're trying the spirit, it's very easy. Where do I stand when the man or woman who is supposedly talking about me, who do they say I am? Jesus made it very simple. When he asked Peter, who do the others say I am? And then, but he said, but Peter, who do you say I am? See, too many people in chat rooms are trying to get convinced by public speak and by the weight of the argument. It's the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Living God, that brings conviction, understanding, and, and wisdom to the equation. So tonight we're going to talk about what's going to come, and, and I'm going to back into the background. So, Dave, when you're done, you can just turn over to me because I do not want to interrupt any of your flow of thoughts. Okay, thank you uh, so much, Steve. It's a great joy to be with um, all of you gentlemen tonight and the listening audience. And we're, we're just here tonight to expound on the Word of God and try to enlighten people. I, I want to begin, first of all, by giving Webster's definition of seduce. It means to lead astray as from duty, rectitude, or the like, to be corrupt to persuade or induce to have sexual intercourse, to lead or draw away as from principles, faith, or allegiance. When we talk about seduction, you have to be already in Christ to be seduced by false prophets and false prophetesses. We're at a time The Lord put a word in my spirit after the election in November, acceleration. And he told me two things would happen, acceleration of apostasy and an acceleration of the famine of his word. Now, the only people that can be seduced are those that are in Christ. And the problem is, as our society continues to crumble, false prophets will flourish more profusely, because if we were in a godly society where truth is being extolled from the White House, the Congress, the Senate, to our state legislators, etc., there wouldn't be this ability for false prophets and deceivers to, to flourish like they're flourishing. There's such a mockery of the truth today. We're we're, we're presently being misled by this administration probably greater than any administration in my lifetime that I've ever witnessed. And this is all leading us to the one world government and the debut of the Antichrist. This is what this is all about. Steve just quoted or read from 1 John 2. The Antichrist spirit is flourishing. It's accelerating And the purpose of this is to seduce those that are godly, that there'll be no more voices, there'll be no more resistance, there'll be no more allegiance to God and his word, and resist this evil. So the Antichrist and this beast system can cover the whole earth in its entirety. And the devil is using prophets and prophetesses to deceive and lure people astray. Um, I want to be careful tonight because I, I don't want to sound judgmental or, or condescending or uh, castigating people or ministers, but it's because of the lack of truth that we are falling into all of this apostasy, this seduction. And I was reading my Bible Sunday. And the Lord began to speak to me from the 13th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. And I'm just going to share what he gave me in the spirit. He said, Behold, the false prophets have become legion. They prophesy falsely from their own hearts. They follow their own spirit and not my spirit. They say, Thus saith the Lord, but they have seen nothing. America, your prophets are like foxes, and they are very sly and subtle. The false prophets do not fill the gaps along the hedge so that you will not be able to stand in the day of trouble. Therefore, the people are greatly exposed to the enemy. The false prophets have seen nothing but falsehood and lies, and they have caused the people to have hope that is in vain. 
The false prophets have flourished because of the sin and the wickedness that is abounding. The false prophets have seen false visions. They've spoken lying divination, and they declare that I have spoken it. But I have not spoken it, saith the Lord. My hand shall be upon the false prophets who are full of vanity. They shall not stand in the counsel of the, of the godly, but they shall fall. The false prophets have seduced my people and led them astray and caused them to wander as in the wilderness and saying unto them, Peace, yet there shall be no peace. Everything that the false prophets have built is upon shame and frivolity. There will be great storms that will gush out of the heavenlies and inundate them to overwhelm them and to overflow their works and their buildings. Great hailstones and great winds will rip and break apart their buildings. Their walls will be thrown down because of their frivolity. I will bring them down to the ground all the way to the very foundations. Many will be consumed as their ministries and buildings will fall. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon them. I will also deal with the false prophetesses who have declared that they will save you from judgment, but they will not save you, for I am your Savior. They have caused the wicked to not turn from their wicked ways and promised them nothing but vanities and worthless hope. I will deliver my people from their evil hands, though. I will send forth my true messengers who will feed you with true knowledge and with true understanding concerning the times. Repent, turn from your idols and your abominations, and I will heal you, saith the Lord. God is tired. I believe if you have the Spirit of Christ in you, you sense the weariness of God. Isaiah said it like this in Isaiah 7.13. It is a small thing for you to weary man, but will you weary my God also? God is tired of everything that's being said in his name, which he hasn't said. They, they use the power of his name. In, in Matthew 24 and 5, he said, And many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. They use his name for the purposes of deception. That leads me tonight to the second chapter of Second Thessalonians. And, uh, Doug and Joe and Steve, I've had people to ask me to not quote scripture so quickly, so I want everybody that has their Bible to turn to Second Thessalonians 2, because this is what we are witnessing, and it's only going to flourish. I don't want no one to say, well, you didn't give me time. Get your Bible, turn to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and we're going to look at this, because what we are witnessing is scriptural. And I'm going to read something from Jimmy Swaggart's Bible tonight to show you how that, and these people say, well, you shouldn't talk about him. He sells these Bibles by the thousands. I have one of them. People need to know the error that's in these printings because this is about leading people astray. And if a man has a pure heart, he doesn't want to lead anyone astray. I, don't, I have no desire to manipulate, to coerce anyone into any falsehood. That's, that's not my emphasis, that's not my goal, that's not my desire, because I'm going to stand before God for this very program tonight. I will give an account for what I have said in this program tonight. But Paul begins in 2 Thessalonians, and that's why I want you to understand this tonight. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. That is the rapture. You, the Bible can't be any more plain that is the rapture, the second coming of Christ. Now we beseech you, brethren. Brethren, that's the church. That's the people of God. By the coming of our Lord Jesus and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us. There were people who wrote false letters and would send them to churches and sign Paul's name. They were false letters then, like there are false people today. They would forge Paul the Apostle's name and say, this is what Paul sent, but he didn't send it. So he's telling the church here, this is the second epistle to the same church at Thessalonica, and it's about the rapture. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 3.13, 1 
1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18, talks about the rapture of the church. So there was a, a, a debate about some of the things being written, etc. So Paul writes this second epistle to try to clear up the misunderstandings, and he gets into great detail to the church and what the church will witness and see and what will happen to the church. So he says, don't be soon shaken in your mind or be troubled neither by spirit. The, the, the scripture that Steve used, 1 Timothy 4.1, now the spirit, the Holy Ghost is outspoken, saying that in the last time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's what Paul is alluding to here in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 2. Neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, that was the impostors, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Paul understood the gravity of seduction in the last days. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, and John. When Jesus went out of the temple and sat down at the Mount of Olives, his disciples said, Tell us what shall be the signs of thy coming and the end of the age, and when these things shall be. Matthew, Mark, and Luke penned Christ's first words, and his first words were, Take heed that no man deceive you. Jesus understood the gravity of seduction and deception as well. So all the uh, 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 Gospels pen this, except for John, that these were Christ's first words about deception. So Paul reiterates that in verse 3 here in 2 Thessalonians 2. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. What day shall not come? Let's go back to verse 1. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. He makes it clear. That day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. The falling away is the apostasy and the deception. Now, let me read from Jimmy Swaggart's Bible that he has done a thorough exegesis on most scriptures, and this is in print. But I want you to notice what he says in verse 3. And I'm going to read his notes and so you'll understand what I'm saying and why I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm reading from his Bible. Let no man deceive you by any means. In other words, this is, this is Jimmy Swaggart's words. In other words, don't listen to that which is scripturally incorrect. Now, that's the truth. He, he put the truth right there. Don't listen to anything that is scripturally incorrect. Now he's, the, the verse goes on to say, For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Now watch what he says now. Should have been translated, For that day shall not come, except there come a departure first. This speaks of the rapture, which is in essence, says the second coming cannot take place until certain things happen. Now all of a sudden, he, 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 his conjecture is, that's a misprint. That's a, that's a wrong translation. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, it was translated correctly. Word for word, it was translated correctly. Because the falling away is the apostasy. It's a departing from the faith, not the rapture. Now, I want to read from my book that I published in 1996 on the second coming, a second look. Let no man deceive you by any means, mode, way, or style, for that day will not come. What day? The day Paul was speaking of in verse 1, the coming of the Lord and our gathering together unto him. But before he comes, there will come a falling away. The word come denotes motion from one place to another. In other words, people leaving their spiritual post, departing from the faith. That's why Paul said, let no man deceive you. The day of his return will not take place until there is a falling away. Swagger says that's departure. But the phrase falling away is very much misunderstood. The Greek word apostasia means defection, to forsake the truth, to depart from the faith. Some Bible teachers teach that the Greek word Apostasia means departure. Now, I wrote this in 96 before Swagger never published his Bible, but I wrote this in 96. 
Some Bible teachers teach that the Greek word apostasia means departure and in some instances rapture. If that is the case, let's insert the word rapture in verse 3 and quote it. Now listen to this. Listen to how cynical this is now. Let no man deceive you by any means, for the rapture shall not come, except there come a rapture first, and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. That does not make any sense at all, because the falling away is a departure from the faith, not a departure in the rapture. And the Greek word, or the Greek number there for Apostasia is 646. Well, the next number in the Greek is 647, and it means a divorcement. We're not divorcing Christ. Paul said we will be gathering together unto Christ. So to twist the scriptures, and that's what Peter said they would do in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Now, as I said, I'm not here tonight to slander, to castigate, to impinge. But what I wrote 17 years ago is coming to pass right now. Now, again, I don't mean to be in a hurry, but when I give these scripture locations, it's hard for people I know to keep up. But in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, as also in his epistles, Peter's talking about Paul's epistles. Peter understood the anointing and the mantle that Paul the apostle carried. So in 2 Peter 3.16, Peter says, And also in his, Paul's epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, the word rest there means to twist or to convolute, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Paul is trying to tell us in the end before Jesus comes, there's going to be a falling away. There's going to be a seduction. People are going to be seduced. And when Christians are seduced, that's called uh, idolatry or spiritual adultery. Because we are married to Christ. He bought us with his blood. Paul said, we've not been purchased with silver or gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so when we, we, we are seduced, we are led astray. Some, it's a spiritual, it's just like a, 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 a married person uh, becomes seduced by another person, and they have a type of control over them because they have seduced them, or they've led them down this path of utter chaos and destruction. Paul understood the power of seduction. Thus he says, let no man deceive you by any means. For Jesus will not return until there is a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. People say, well, we're, we, we're not going to see the Antichrist. Paul is telling the church at Thessalonica, you're going to see him. You're going to see this man. Because he goes on to say in verse 4, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I want to drop down to verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. What we're doing tonight is trying to expound the truth that you will be saved, that you will not be led astray, that you will not fall for these heresies and these mendacious teachings that are, that are legion right now. And, 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 and people are just, as I said earlier, the only reason these faults prophets and prophetesses can flourish is because our society is crumbling. 
And so people are putting hope in false vanities and in worthless words and, and, and worthless hope. Our hope is only in Jesus Christ. And, and we're witnessing it right now. Everything that we're seeing is, is a veneer, uh, a, a charlatan spirit, uh, a, a pretending spirit to seduce us so that we cannot know the truth. Regretfully, most of the time when somebody in a marital relationship is having an affair, the other person in that marriage is the last to know it because People hide it from them or don't tell them the truth or they don't want to believe it. But somewhere along the way, the other person became seduced. They, they became lured into a situation. And, and, and that's the power of seduction. That's why I read the, uh, uh, Webster's definition. When we do that as Christians, we've committed a spiritual adultery. James 4, 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God, Whosoever therefore shall be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. I don't believe there's a true Christian listening to me tonight that wants to be the enemy of God. But when you become seduced and you have an extra uh, marital affair, spiritually speaking, you become lured away from the truth and you start having hope in something that's not genuine, that's not real, that's not pure, that's not holy. And that's what's happening to us. And, 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 and as I said this the last time I was on this program, 20 years ago, I thought Bill Clinton was the most profane, vile, wicked person I'd ever seen or heard. And I would love to digress back 20 years. And if, we've, if we have fallen this far in 20 years, what will it be in the next decade or, or the next 20 years? How, 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 how bad is it going to get? I, my air conditioning went out of my house Friday. The blower did. The man that come repair it, you know what he told me? He said, "We, we." I, he said, "I know." And here's, this was his words, not mine. He said, "We have queers in our church, and our preacher won't say anything." He said, "We have Sunday school teachers that are that are shacking up, committing adultery, teaching Sunday school, and he won't preach against the sin." And my question to him is, "What are you doing staying there then?" You know this. You are witnessing this. But see, he too is being seduced. Psalms 94, 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Steve and I, Doug and Joe, we're trying to stand against the iniquity. The word iniquity is not, does not mean the same thing as sin. The iniquity is the physical act. It's, it's the, it's the, that's why Paul said, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It's, it's, it's the workings of this evil. The sin is the transgression of the law. And these works of iniquity are flourishing. And people are so concerned about being politically correct, they won't say anything, they won't do anything, and that's the very reason we're in the crisis we're in relative to the church in this hour. Eva, I'm going to let you take over. I think what is really important too, David, is the word depart from the faith. And, and here, uh, this is out of Strong's. And ladies and gentlemen, you can, you can have the most amazing adventure with the Spirit of the Living God by just getting a concordance or go to a, a Strong's concordance online and start looking at what these words mean. Because, David, again, 10 minutes before we went on the show, I'm going to reiterate this because I'm feeling prompted to do so. The Lord spoke to me and said, Tell my people, this is what Jesus said. Where do they put me in their pulpits? Do they use my name? Do they speak my name? You see, we make it hard, but basically Jesus is saying, you know, hereby know ye the Spirit of God, First John 4, 1, 3. I mean, John is saying that about the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. I don't think people, David, Doug, and Joe, understand the obliteration process in the church, because David and I are talking, Pastor David Langford and I are talking about judgment beginning in the house of God. This is kind of a carryover from the last show we did. And we're talking to brethren across the world tonight to encourage you, to give you the meat of the word, but to give you the most amazing discernment. You know, David, when you and I first met, we both met over over Jesus. Let's face it, he, he brought us across each other's path. But what I've learned, and I've taught 
so many uh, young Christians and confused Christians that said, it's real simple. Who did they say that Jesus is? And you know what the answer in my spirit instantly is that the, they are denying, David, the pulpits in America are denying Jesus Christ. They're using the concept of God. They're doing it in an immoral fashion, just like your repairman was talking to you about, just like everything else. But who do they say we are? These men and women who have brought the, the basically the prince of darkness into their pulpits and basically told the king of glory, get out. The point being is is that this is what the people need to hear tonight. They need to understand to come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ is, let me just make it easy for everyone. Some people don't know this. Christ is his title, okay? It means the Messiah, the anointed one. Jesus is his name. That's what the angel told Mary. She'd call him. And the thing is, is that this is why Satanists, this is why everybody out there is so afraid to use the name of Jesus. And I can tell you why. The reason there's no power in the pulpit, there is no Jesus. The Holy Spirit has given you, David Langford, me the commission, others, Pastor John Kyle, all of the amazing men and women of God, Pastor Bruce York out there, the people of God who know Jesus and have an encounter with them have absolutely no one else to talk about, nothing better to talk about, and there is no power in the other name. When you watch how the demons tremble in fear at the name of Jesus, now I'm not talking about namby-pamby, but the authority that comes with the name is why there is such an attempt now to obliterate the name of the Lord. And I'm going to say this, and this is me, so don't get mad at David Langford, but I think he'd agree. If you are going to a church, and they will not name the name of Jesus, oh, they'll talk about God and love and everything, where do they put Jesus? That should be your first uh, identifying marker as to are you getting the truth or not. Because you cannot have truth without Jesus being the truth, the way, and the life. So, what is the spirit? Here's what I'm trying to say to you. Jesus made it easy. John spells it out. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not, confess means, doesn't it, to speak, David, with your voice? So, yes. if the voices are silent in the pulpit... As to the Lord who bought us with his blood, redeemed us by his blood, will raise us in the last day at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, or we who are alive will be caught up to be with him in the air at the second coming, then that's a pretty uh, spectacular thing to get excited about. And, you know, when we spoke on the phone the other night, David, you had mentioned, too, that God had laid it on your heart that judgment begins at the house of God and that the prophets and prophetesses who have basically titillated the ears, and if I'm misrepresenting you, stop me, that God has a controversy with them, and he's about to move. Did I hear you accurately? Absolutely. And how is he going to move? Well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, in his love, he'll move you out of there before the axe falls. But if you are getting a nudge to leave, and if you go to a church and you claim to be a light, and you have not said to the pastor, we're here to talk about Jesus, and anybody who's a politically correct pastor is a puke, okay? In my opinion, this is my words, he has abandoned the faith, he has embraced the doctrine of devil, and you cannot separate political correctness from the doctrines of devils. So again, the word depart, this is, there, there, there's like ten different meanings to it, but here's what it says. It means to stand off, to stand aloof, to go away, to depart from Jesus, to desert him, to fall away and become faithless. Well, I don't believe he's the son of God. That's what the pastors say. To shun. We can't talk about Jesus here. To cease, to withdraw oneself from, to fall away, and basically to keep absent from Jesus. You know, I can, I can say, David, over the... Forty-some years I've been saved by the grace of God. It's amazing the name of Jesus is what causes people to either get excited or flip out. And what's a tragedy to me, and I'm getting you know emails all the time, or you two talk about faith, faith, faith. Listen, I will go up against the biggest army on faith. I can't do it with a rifle as a single rifleman. But I can go with the legions of angels, as you can, Pastor Langford, as you can, Doug Hagman, as you can, Joe Hagman, as everyone listening to us in whatever part of the world can. And, and, and what does somebody say? You and Jesus? 
that's an army to be uh, to be uh, you know that's not an easy army to overcome. Obviously, we can be overcome in our own strength, but in His strength, we're not easy to overcome. We may lose some battles, but we ultimately win the war. So what we're trying to get across to everyone tonight is this: that the first thing, and I, I, I want to do this kind of David to give absolute. If you do not know the Word of God, you are going to be deceived. If you do not know Jesus, you are going to be deceived. And Hawk told me, I don't know if you, you, you don't probably know this, David, but Hawk told me an hour ago on the phone, he called and he says, Steve, do you know that in the clear, the military command, when they gave their tones, okay, and all you in military land will understand this, absolutely, you know what they call, their call name was? Antichrist. Now, for those of you in the military, and those of you across the world, and this will apply to your militaries. I'm not just talking about the United States military. The militaries of this world are being gathered together to make war against the king of glory. That's what Armageddon or Har Megiddo is all about. And prior to that, we are going to have a nuclear exchange someplace so that the Antichrist, which means in place of Christ, can come on the scene. So Pastor Langford the most powerful military commanders in the world who fly around in machines that most people don't even know exist, and their call sign is Antichrist. Can God make it any plainer for us, David? Can God make it any plainer? And I asked Hawk, I said, Hawk, are you kidding me? I said, were they just trying to be funny or cutesy? He said, no, Steve, that was their call letter. And there are people around the world who come from military backgrounds. I don't. I don't even understand their codes. Uh, good night. ADD doesn't do well with code. The point is, is that we've got a su- supra authority that is represented literally and empowered by the Antichrist. And if everyone has seen the stories over the last week to ten days, the U.S. military has declared war on Christians. You know, I, I, I don't know, David, how I can plead, and I don't. I'm asking you a question. Outside of the grace of God and the quickening of the Spirit of God and the God granting the spirit of repentance, if you were serving your country and taking an oath, yet to be told that if you serve Jesus Christ, you've got to be quiet. Oh, but if you're a if you're a pedophile, no problem. If you're a rapist, no problem. If you're a homosexual, no problem. And even Steve Pachinik, who I know, Doctor Pachinik, he lives in Bozeman. Sometime I've had him on my show, radio show. Uh, been out to lunch and dinner a lot of times. But he made the statement on Alex Jones that even the top military commander was guilty of crimes against his men. Do you know what that is? It means he has compromised them in a homosexual fashion to get them to go along with what he wants. So the thing is, is that when Steve Pachinks is saying that, and he was a secretary, a deputy secretary under a state and stuff, and he said point blank, Alex, I think, said, aren't you worried they're going to kill you? Don't you want to tone that down? And he said, no. The point is the truth is out there. If, if every veteran, including you, Bob, if, 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 if you understood that there aren't enough men to physically take this thing on in the natural because it's a supernaturally directed and orchestrated war, I don't care what you've done in Korea, Vietnam, what you've got to learn now is you've got to learn to fight the battle God's way. And by the way, I'm no pacifist, okay? The point being is that there is a vilification, an assault, an affront, an attack, a full court press against the Lord Jesus Christ. And you quoted the scripture, David, who will rise up for me against what, the workers of iniquity? Right. I'll turn it back to you. You know, I was laying in bed the other night, and I was just laying there praying in my mind. And uh, I said, Lord, if you want to show me something or reveal something to me, you know, Please do so. And instead of giving me a fresh revelation, he reminded me of something he showed me back 14 years ago. I was standing in the bathroom shaving, and the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, you are a very weak man. And I said, no, I'm not a weak man. I'm a very strong man. I'm I'm a, I'm a very powerful man. He said, you are a very, very weak man. And he went into detail to show me how weak I was. And he began by sharing something about John the Baptist. He said, have you ever had the revelation, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, when John saw Jesus coming to the river Jordan? I said, no, Lord. He said, have you ever handled my body physically? 
and immersed me in water and baptized me. I said, No, Lord. He said, Have you ever seen the Holy Ghost descend in the form of a dove? I said, No, Lord. He said, Have you ever heard an audible voice from heaven? This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I said, No, Lord, I've never heard that. And then he shared this closing thought with me. He said, When John the Baptist was in prison, Facing death, he called his disciples together and said, Go ask him, is he the one, or look we for another? And when he showed me John's weakness, though he had handled Jesus physically, baptized him in water, saw the Holy Ghost ascend, uh, heard the voice from heaven, this is my beloved son, he said, look how weak he was. And I began to weep. I didn't realize how weak I was, so he showed me those things. God has a way of getting your attention, and I'm sharing that say this night. You better be in the Word of God. You better be led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are called the sons of God. Because this Antichrist spirit is going to be so powerful, because Paul said, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. And the next verse, verse 11, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. John fourteen six. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And because people re- will spurn and reject the truth, they're not going to be saved when this thing gets sideways. And no matter what God does seemingly anymore, it seems like, people have a spirit of rebellion they, they, they don't want to embrace the truth. Uh, they, 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 if you tell them the truth, they accuse you of, of lying. And in, in Isaiah 66, verse 4, here's what Isaiah prophesied in the last days. God said, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. So God says, I'm going to choose your delusions. So it's a double whammy. The devil's going to deceive with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And then God says, I'll send strong delusion upon you. And so to me, humility, contrition, praying, fasting, reading the Bible, trying to stay in the presence of God and, and hear the voice of God is what's going to be the key in the end because I, I, it, regretfully, if you're wrong, you're wrong. There, there's, no, there's no 27 ways about it. If you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're right. And, and the devil has tried to skew everything, make everything gray, uh, as Isaiah said, they call bitter, sweet, sweet, bitter, evil, good, good, evil, uh, uh, dark for light, light for darkness. Everything that we as Christians look at and say, that's evil, the world says, no, that's good. I mean, I, I'm disgusted to think the president of the United States would call a basketball player and laud him, extol him, and praise him because he came out and said, hey, I'm gay. And would bless, plan, say, God bless planned parenthood. I And you see, he says to the world, I'm a Christian. Are you kidding me? Anybody that believes that man is a Christian is already apostatized and been seduced. That's what we're trying to get you to see tonight. That's what they're trying to get you to, we're trying to get you to understand tonight. It's, it's these things that transpire every day, every day. Can you imagine Ronald Reagan, the last, I believe, man that professed any kind of Christianity in the White House, would call a, a, a sodomite and laud him? 
1984, Ronald Reagan declared the Bible to be the book of the year. Do that today. Do that today. You couldn't. You couldn't do it because there's such a, a, an all-out assault against Christianity. Evangelicals, uh, what's his name, Steve? Uh, World Net Daily, Joseph Farah, had yep. an article just a, just a while back. Evangelicals are the number one threat to this government. And when they start putting the pressure, this beast government starts putting the pressure on all of us, and they're putting it on us every day. You, you're going to be surprised, the people that are going to bend and bow and say, well, I'm, 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 I'm reneging on my faith. And that's what Paul said, they will depart from it. They will stand off and say, oh, not me. You say, well, I won't do that. Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to go to prison with you. Jesus said, Peter, before the cock crows, you shall deny me thrice. And I, 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 in my mind, I've thought this thought many times. Peter walked away and said, you know, Christ, Jesus, you've been right about everything, but you're wrong on this one. You're wrong on this one. I won't deny you. I will not deny you. Under his voice, under his, under his, uh, uh, in his mind, under his voice, he was saying that. Christ didn't hear him say that. But Christ said, you will deny me. And before it was over with, Peter's cursing and swearing, I don't even know this man. That's how, when the pressure gets put, and that's what great tribulation means, pressure. When the pressure gets intense, you're going to find people wilt and melt away. That's why Paul and his closing your words in Ephesians 6, verse 10, he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We're not going to be able to do it. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We're going to have to trust him and embrace him because I'm telling you, when it gets hot and the heat is turned up, you're going to see people melt like a straw being thrown, uh, a plastic straw put in the fire. They're going to wilt and wither right up. I don't want to be like that. I want to be a man of God and stand up for Jesus here in this end time hour. Go ahead, somebody. Well, I, you know, I want to take this, this, hit this thing head on because I knew from an early age when I had met Jesus, you know, and read about Peter, you know what my prayer was? I said, Lord, I give you up in an instant. Help me not to do it when that time comes, okay? Now, that was pretty interesting, David, because I was really ignorant of the things of God at the beginning walk of the Lord, my walk with the Lord. But I read about Peter. That really troubled me because it set into motion, I'd say, almost like a symbol shiver where you see the cartoons and they hit the cartoon character and it vibrates, you know, because we cannot stand. Take heed, lest when you think you stand, you fall. And I forget who it was that said, you know the key to standing? is falling on your face and calling out to God for his strength before time. Doesn't that make sense? The way up is a way down. You don't get up by thinking you're high and mighty. You get down by serving. And that is so amazing to me that it, it, it is, it's the way of the Lord. Now, I, I think that most people need to understand something because you brought up, you know, the call. I asked Henry Groover, and, and, and uh, you know, this really bothered me because I said, I, I'm, I'm around a lot of people that absolutely claim to love Jesus, but they voted for Obama. I'm talking about white people, too, not just black people that just voted because he's black. And I said, Henry, what's the basis of Christians who claim to be Christians endorsing everything that God says he hates? Call abortion whatever you want. It's child sacrifice. Even the Satanists, even the the absolute slaughterers of the innocents, they shake their head at how, I, I can't say the word they use when one of them talked to me and said, how blank dumb can you Christians be? I said, well, I'm not a dumb Christian. I said, look, I know exactly what it is. I said, you're not doing anything different than your father the devil's had everybody doing to the chit. They have to have innocent blood. Yet the argument, and, and David, here is a tragedy, and I'm going to say this, and I, and I stand by this, and this is what the Lord said. If the people haven't prayed against it, if they haven't stood out against it, if they haven't spoken against it, but they've winked at it and turned a blind to it, the Lord said, I will hold you accountable. When he said that to me, I said, Lord, then I'm asking for a prayer. I don't know if anybody in history or the world has ever prayed this. 
I said, Lord, I'm asking for those who claim they know you, but still have said nothing, done nothing, and still think that it's okay to slaughter little people in the womb and basically out of the womb. I'm asking for you to let them hear the cries that you hear of the blood, cry of the innocent. I said, Lord, you said in your word, this is how I pray, you all have heard me pray, that, Lord, you said in your word that the, the righteous blood of Abel cried out to you. What about 60 million plus just in the United States? We're not talking worldwide. I think the numbers aborted worldwide are, you know, a quarter of a billion. But the point being is, is that, I mean, here's the thing. Do, 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 and this is a question, Pastor, because you've been a pastor and you've had congregation. What is the thinking of people that can no longer discern or choose a blind eye? I mean, I've heard people, black athletes, I've heard white athletes give testimonies, and then they'll say, but Obama's a Christian. And then you have uh, a, a comedian come out and say he'd like to thank his Lord and Savior, uh, Barack Obama, you know, Jamie Foxx, and, and that should have been the biggest call of blasphemy that's ever in my knowledge that's one of the biggest things you can do you know and and yet the bottom line is the churches are silent and with the silence comes impotence with impotence comes betrayal and because because betrayal is an automatic byproduct of when a person doesn't have the strength of their convictions and i pray david that tonight god's literally going to pour liquid stainless steel on the spines of men that men are going to rise up stand up and look again i you know if god tells you to go make war i think you'd be smart to make war the way he tells you to and not off going silly you know and and let me give you something this is really important to share with everybody this is from a fighter pilot friend of mine retired now but a uh, actual fighter pilot he said steve Concerning command authority level call signs, it's my understanding those call signs are generated and approved at the very highest levels and not generated by the crews operating those craft. They are stuck using call signs assigned for the mission. So what my friend is saying, the pilot, he's basically saying is that somebody chose the Antichrist. Who is it that makes war on the Christians? And David, if I could scream, by the way, I physically can't scream, okay? My, my uh, vocal cords won't let me scream. But if I could yell, if I could do something in the natural to wake up those who dwell on the dust of the earth, the bottom line is I would say, wake up, Christians. You're in their sights. They want you dead. And, and this is the thing that if the Lord will fight our battles, but most Christians don't even want to allow the Lord to fight their battles. They acquiesce to hell. They acquiesce to sin. And I'm getting like, you know, the typical thing. Don't you know that there's no J and that Jesus' real name is Yeshua? I am a Gentile. I am not a Jew. When Jesus appeared to me, I said, who are you, Lord? When I fell on my face and he had to basically lift me up, he said, I am Jesus, your Savior. I'm sure if I had been a, uh, uh, a Jewish believer or something, then he probably would have said, I am Yeshua HaMashiach. But the point is, is what we're talking about. I have yet, and maybe there are those of you. John, would you send me an email, John Kyle? Have you ever seen in your deliverance ministries, or any of those of you who have functional de deliverance ministries, have you guys ever seen uh, the response of the evil spirits to Yeshua? I haven't, David. I mean, you and I were, are both, you know, basically uh, uh, full gospel guys, so I've never seen it. Have you, Pastor? I've never seen it, but I have used the name of Jesus to cast out demons. I've Me never, too. It never crossed my mind to say Yeshua HaMashiach. I yep. mean, I've come off of Seven-day fast, 10-day fast, 21-day fast, 40-day fast, and, and, and fight demons, people demon-possessed, and lay hands on them and cast the devil out. People puke, vomit, fall out. I've seen all that stuff. Never have I used anybody's name but Jesus. So I don't know who else to use because I'm like you. I'm a Gentile. All I know is Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any of it, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Matthew one twenty one. She shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. I mean, I don't. I just don't understand that. That's that, 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 that's another seduction. I'm telling you, yeah. I know that sounds hard and crass. I'm a I, no, you know, 
Uh, I, Pastor, I agree with you 100%. Steve, I agree with you as well. And so, and Joe is nodding his head over here. We get that often as well. Uh, gentlemen, we're up against the top of the hour break. We're going to be right back with Pastor David Langford, the voice of evangel- evangelism.com, and Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com. You're listening to the Hagman and the Hagman Report on this, the 11th day of May 2013. I'm Doug Hagman in studio with Joe Hagman. Together we are the Hagman and the Hagman. We're very humbled to have these two gentlemen with us tonight, spreading the word of God. Stay with us. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to hour number two of this special Saturday edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report this May 8, May 11th, 2013, with our very special guest, David Langford and Steve Quayle. You can find David Langford, the voice of a evangelism.com and Steve Quayle at stevequayle.com. Tonight we are talking about the seducing spirits and exposing the different ways that seducing spirits work in snaring the believers. And there are endless ways, it seems, that the evil can capture a believer through thoughts, through ideas, through twisting of even God's word. And that's what we were talking about the first hour. The twisting of the Word of God being used to deceive people. And Pastor Langford, you did a great job of uh, giving an example uh, out of Thessalonians. And uh, we still got a lot more to go. So, guys, if you just want to pick up where we left off. Well, David, uh, before I turn it over to you real quick, I just asked John Kyle. Now, I personally have watched John Kyle minister. He's a dear friend of mine in Billings, Montana. And 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 just a, a, amazingly anointed man. Here's what he said to me when I just said, John, I asked for him to respond. I am tired of those Judaizers, those who say Jesus is wrong. I don't have time for them or their criticisms. It is. It, it, here's the point. The point isn't an anti-Jewish statement. The point is a twisting of the name of Jesus. This is something that people have got to get through their brains. They've got it. Listen, I doubt if anybody's fighting over this issue. My claim is they've never met Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. They may acknowledge him as that, but they've never met him as that. And you and I, David, really need tonight, maybe in the third hour, to hit the transforming power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost, and the conqueror who is the King of glory, who puts his spirit in us that we might receive power that we can overcome in Jesus' name. You know, Doug, what you said, obviously you and Joe both have people who want to convert you to Judaism. Uh, Paul called them Judaizers. Um, That is nothing but guilt and condemnation from man. The Holy Ghost convicts, but men and Satan condemn. Romans 8, 1, there's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law, listen to what I'm going to quote here, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and of death. The law, the letter kills. The Spirit gives life. The whole book, the book of Galatians, that's, that's, that was the whole purpose for that, that entire epistle was people trying to go back under the law but having received Christ through faith and Christ's spirit. Galatians 4. And the reason this is important is because this is seduction. This is exactly what we're talking about. I, I, I love God. I know Doug. Joe, Steve, you guys love the Lord. You pray, you cry out to God, you love him. He has never one time dealt with us in any of that capacity, in no way, shape, form, or fashion. He's never dealt with me in that Hebraic dialect and all of that. Never once. I study Hebrew. I study Greek for the purpose of getting understanding, getting better understanding. But I've never had any unction by the Holy Ghost to go back and pick that up and 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 live that. Here's the problem, and I'm at Galatians four, beginning at verse nine. 
But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements where you desire again, again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Now, Paul made it clear, how, how go you again? He, he's talking to Jews who've been converted to Christ and go back to the law. That's why he uses the word again. When you do something again, you're repeating something you've already done. And furthermore, I, I, they don't understand the, the scriptures in, in, in uh, Galatians three twenty nine. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. Abraham was never under the law. He got saved by grace, and Melchizedek gave him communion, which was typified Jesus Christ, the bread and the wine, typifying the coming Messiah. Before there was a law, before there was ever the Mosaic law, there was the Abrahamic covenant. And, 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 and people, that's why it's called dispensation. That was a, a dispensing of that particular time and era. But people want to go back. And how do you go back to the law? How do you go back to carnality? And and that's why the Pharisee and the publican, and Steve always says he's the publican, the publican stands there and beats his breast and says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But the Pharisee says, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. See that bigotry and self I fast, I pay tithes of all that I possess. He, 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 he tells God a litany of things he does. He does, keeping the Sabbath, whatever. Jesus said, who do you think went home justified? The Pharisee or the publican? The publican was a tax collector. He said the tax collector went home justified. The Pharisee went away seduced and blind and deceived. Yet he was a man of prayer. But he see, true prayer, as far as I'm concerned, true spiritual prayer is birthed in heaven. Thy will be done on earth even as it is in heaven. The plan of God is already established in heaven. It's up to us to become enough spiritually minded to get the plan of God through our prayer life that God has already established in heaven. See, and we live in an era. That's not what pe see people want to have it their way. I don't. I don't care whether it's. Uh, UPC, uh, once saved, always saved, uh, uh, Jesus only, uh, Yahweh. Those are man's ways of trying to get to God. Jesus said, I am the way. <laughs> Any other way is wrong. And, and that's why religion, religion is so damnable. And, 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 and men, for whatever reason, I don't understand it. I really don't. They think they've got to add something to what Christ did. You know, they just can't receive the gift of salvation. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. As I said, religion condemns you. Religion will put you down. Religion will say you're not saved because you didn't do this or you don't do that. Th that has absolutely nothing to do with salvation. No, nobody can do anything to save themselves or keep themselves saved. It is the Word of God and the Holy Ghost that keeps us saved. And that's why this seduction is going to be so powerful, and we're witnessing it. We are witnessing it from the White House down. Obama said he believed in abortion because he did not want his two daughters to ever be, uh, what was the term he used, saddled with an unwanted pregnancy. Is, what, is that a Christian father? I would teach my children abstinence, not abortion. And isn't it funny, this, this Castro guy, they're going to try him now for, what is it, five uh, aggravated uh, uh, murders because those babies were aborted by starving that girl and, and, and uh, give, making her have sleep deprivation. They're going to charge him for murdering these, these babies. But that's, that, that's murder, they say. But you can go to a clinic, this Gosnell attorney, in, in, in y'all state, doesn't Joe Pennsylvania, and that, that's that's okay. Oh yeah. I, I don't understand. It. Well, I do. I, I do. It's what I'm saying. It's deception and it's seduction. 
See, when they want it to go for their way, they say, well, we're going to try this man for murder. But they do 4,600 abortions a day in America, and that's okay. That, that's okay. As Steve said, that blood, that innocent blood is out here in these landfills. And that blood is crying out to God every day, avenge our blood. And you've got Christians. You've got Christian people who say, I am a Christian, thinks abortion is all right. If the devil could have, he would have caused Mary to have aborted that baby because she wasn't yet married to Joseph. There would be no Savior. Life is sacred, and the life of the flesh is in the blood, the Bible says. And, and so that's why we get into the, Steve knows more about that than I do, about the genetics, the DNA, because that's why Jesus came and gave his life. There's no other substitution. There's nothing else that works, no, no fasting, no praying. We just do those things because we are saved by Jesus' blood. But those things don't save us, and they don't keep us saved. And, and using this name or that name, that, 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 that's the most cynical thing I've ever heard in my life. And, 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 and I know Tex Mars is a Jew hater. I get emails People say, I need to read this. I, need, I don't need to read any of that. I spend 95% of my time reading one book. And guess what it is? It's the Bible. And people spend more time reading books that men have passed on through their own knowledge. And I've written books too, so I'm, I'm not criticizing that. But those books are not inspired and anointed like the Word of God is. So they know more about secular writings, and we know how men rewrite history and twist and distort. And, and Ezekiel 37 made it plain, those dead bones, God gave them life, Ezekiel prophesied, and they went back to a little place over there called Israel. If you can't understand that prophecy and the, the magnitude of it, you're already seduced. You're already in apostasy. He looked at these bones and said, can they live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, only you know if they can live or not. And he prophesied there in Ezekiel 37, I believe it's verse 12, those graves. He said, they'll be brought out of their graves, and they will be brought back to what? They'll be, I'll bring you into the land of Israel. And I'm telling you, people better be careful who you're listening to, what spirit you're, they're backslid. I'll be the first to tell you, Israel is backslid, Israel is anti-Christ, and Israel is anti-God. I was over there in 2006 or seven, and I was at the, at the Western Wall walking around, and a rabbi looked at me and he said, where are you from? I said, the United States. He said, which state? I said, North Carolina. He said, come. And he took me into a part you never get to see on television. There's an arched uh, opening, and in there is the Torah. And, and there, there, there's rabbis in there reading from Exodus 15.3. I'm the Lord God that healeth thee. And they're trying to raise people out of wheelchairs. They're doing all this stuff. And I'm standing there, and I'm witnessing all of this stuff. And I said, God, how is it I feel such a kindred spirit here, but yet these people don't believe in Jesus? How can this be? You know what he said so easily? You have the same Father. You have the same Father. They still they believe in God the Father, but they haven't embraced God the Son. That's the reason they're anti-Christ right now. They don't believe Jesus is Messiah. But God didn't make the covenant with them. He made it with a man called Abraham. And it's all based on that covenant. And yes, they are backslid. And yes, they are apostate right now. But they're coming in. It's going to be hell in Israel. They're coming in. But remember, Gentiles, Romans 10, 25, or 11, 25, blindness in part has happened unto Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. You better be thankful that they're blind, that God said, I'm going to go after the Gentiles now, because we had no hope. We had no right to Christ, none. But because he loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And that's the danger. That's the danger of what's taking place. And yes, they're backslid. Yes, they are away from Jehovah God. And they're looking for Messiah the first time. But they're going to see his nail-scarred hands. And the, who did this to you? He said, you did this to me. You did this to me in your own houses. Your own house. You, you did this to me. And the, they will repent. But 
I, I couldn't understand the kindredness of, of the Spirit. And the Lord said, because you got the same Father. And it made all the sense in the world to me. I believe I could live in Israel. That's the only place I believe I could live and feel as comfortable there as I do right here in my own home. Now, I don't understand that. I told a man the other day, that's the only place in the world called the Holy Land. You ever ask yourself why it's called the Holy Land? Because the man that symbolizes the Holy of Holies walked that land, and his name was called Jesus. And that's why it's called the Holy Land. It's not a land of just sacred maps. It's holy because the Son of God walked it. San Francisco, New York, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, these places aren't holy. Why? Jesus never walked it, but they call that place the Holy Land. Why? Not because of Allah or Muhammad or Krishna or Buddha, but because Jesus walked the land. And, and this is why this is so important, because regretfully there will be those tonight who will say, I don't believe that. that that's, you're, you're still wrong. You're going to believe a lie, and you're going to be damned, because you refuse, Paul said, you refuse to believe the truth. And I'm telling you, that truth is Jesus. I am the way and the truth and the life. He's not just a truth. He said, I'm the truth. And Pilate, when he stood before Christ, he said to Christ, what is truth? And there stood truth right before him. And he could not even recognize it. And I, I have fear for so many people today because they're religious. And, and I get emails, you need to read this, you need to read that, you need to study this. I, I'm going to study what the Holy Ghost leads me to study because that is what he said he would do. John 16, 13, how be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. And that's why we're doing. And, and, and Doug and Joe, don't let nobody mentally whip you with this Judaizer's don't let them do that to you. Resist. That's evil. You resist that. Jesus came to take that away. Uh, Romans 10, verse 4 says, For Christ is the end of the law. That's what the Scripture says. I'm not saying that. The Scripture says he was the end of it. And now we enter in. That's why the veil was rent in the temple. Now all men have access. If you weren't a Levite, you couldn't even get in the Holy of Holies. You had to be of the tribe of Levi. But now because Christ rent the veil, all men, Jew and Gentile, get to go into the Holy of Holies. Not because you're from the tribe of Levi, because we could never be that. We're Gentiles. And you're either a Gentile or you're an Israeli. That's the only two nationalities the Bible ever speaks of, is either Jews, Israelis, or Gentiles. And that's the end of it. And, and, and for people to keep preaching that, and I know I'm going to make a lot of people mad, but I don't care anymore because I'm tired of people trying to mentally uh, beat other people down because you're not using uh, Yahweh or, or Yahshua. That is not the truth. It's it just not. And, and I want to encourage both of you guys tonight. Don't, don't let nobody mentally browbeat you with that rhetoric. That, that's just not. If they knew the word, like they should know the word, they would know that's not applicable today. Boy, I, I really appreciate that clarification, Pastor, because you would not believe the number of emails that we get. But, but Pastor, if, if I can just revisit something you said here, and this sounds, this may sound to you like a very academic question, but you had said something about uh, the Jews being under, uh, or God made a covenant with Abraham. Uh, the Jews today who fail to believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, are they under a different covenant, or do, or must they convert in order to be saved and go to heaven? They ah. have they have to believe on Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Okay. okay. See, that's why he said he fulfilled the law. Jesus, just let's just go back to the Exodus, Exodus chapter twelve. This will be the beginning of months for you. He established a new time. The month was called Nisan. It was around April, uh, March or April. So that's why it's called Passover. All those years, all those hundreds of years of cutting lambs, goats, throats, bullocks, turtle doves, whatever, was typifying the coming Messiah. Isaiah gives us Isaiah 53. He was wounded. He was bruised for our transgressions. 
his, uh, our, our iniquities was upon him, et cetera. It just goes on and on and on. As I used the, 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 what the Lord showed me tonight in, in my testimony, John said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. At the Last Supper in Luke 22, Jesus said, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you. What was he meaning? I tonight will fulfill the entirety of all these years of the Mosaic law. I will fulfill that when they begin to eviscerate, mar, and mutilate my body. I will be that Passover lamb. I will become that lamb this night. And we, you know the story, the trial, the beating, the, 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 the marring and mutilating his body. And thus, when he said on the cross, it is finished. Well, what was finished? All that had ever been prophesied from Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. He finished that that was prophesied. His, his vicarious, efficacious death and work on the cross. And that's, that's why, see, he stopped the, the 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 part of the law of offering sacrifices when he rent that veil, Hebrew says his flesh was the veil. His flesh was the veil, and so when it was rent, Josephus says it would take I think four yoke to rip that veil into. That's how thick that that woven veil was. It was so heavy, but it was rent from from from, from the top to the bottom signifying men can go in there. And why do you think God allowed his own tabernacle to be destroyed by Titus? He was doing away with all of that. There's no, no, no more need for sacrifice because Jesus was the sacrifice, his blood. That's why he was conceived through the Holy Ghost because the blood comes from the Father. So he could not have an earthly father. He had an earthly mother, but the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and said, as Steve said earlier, his name shall be called Jesus. That's what the angel said. She said, how can this thing be? For I know not a man. And he said, with God all things are possible. And then he said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and overshadow you, and you will conceive. Now, Think of the faith Joseph had to have to take her as a wife, and she says, Honey, I'm carrying a baby. I know it's not yours, but you're not going to believe this story. He had to have such faith. I mean, can any man imagine his fiance? you know, right before you get married, I'm carrying somebody else's baby? This Joseph had to and we don't, we just we just discount him as some dude. He had to have such faith in what happened to her that it was the Lamb of God that she was carrying. For Isaiah said, For behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted means God with us. God came to the earth through Jesus Christ. Romans, uh, John 1, 11, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So people, pe people today, that's... That's religion, and that, that, that's what scares me about uh, people say, well, I love the Lord, but you've got to do this or you've got to do that. Abraham was a heathen. Abraham was a pagan, and God chose him. And that's why, see, Abraham was just like us. We don't bring anything to the table except our sins. What, what do we bring to God that has any value? Other than our soul, God breathed into the nostrils of man, and man became a living soul. Other than that, value of the eternal soul, man has nothing to bring to God but filthy rags. And, and that's, well, that's a true. woman's rags. That's what Isaiah's talking about. That, that, that's what he's saying. Your righteousness is as filthy rags, menstrual rags. That's, that's what he's telling us in that passage. Now, that's, that's, that's crass, but, and that's blunt, and that's pointed. But that's what you bring when you bring works to Christ. It's as filthy rags. So that's why it's a, it's a humbling thing to be born again. Because no man is worthy, but because Jesus took our sins, now we can enter into the Holy of Holies. We, we can enter in any time we want to. Every time we pray, every time Steve prays, 
he's privileged by the grace of Jesus Christ to go into the Holy of Holies and pray and talk to God. And as I said, under the law, you had to be born of the Levitical, uh, the Levites, uh, to just to be able to work in the temple. And then there were just an elect few that could become a high priest to go into the Holy of Holies. But now we all have been made kings and priests and can go in. And, and, and this is what concerns me, and that's why we're doing this program. This is another type of seduction. Yes. This is, this is deception, folks. I'm telling you, I, I hate to be so hard, but in my spirit, my spirit is greed. Because this is nothing but the flesh, and flesh is filthy. Listen, let me, let me tell you something. I, I'm going I'm to let somebody else have it. I believe it's the 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. Now listen to this. I'm going to find it right quick. When God was telling Moses how to build the tabernacle and to build the altar, he said, you build a ramp. You build a ramp. Here it is, Exodus 20, verse 26. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Moses had to build a ramp up to the brazen altar to offer the sacrifice. Now, why a ramp and not steps? Because with the long flowing robe on, if there were steps, when the man raises his foot up to take the next step, his ankle flesh is seen. His ankle flesh is seen. But when you build a ramp, your ankle flesh is never seen. Never. He told Moses, you do not go up by steps. Now that tells me how much God hates the flesh. And how people think they can do something in the flesh and please God? God hadn't changed. It's just we're under the dispensation of grace. But he still hates the flesh. Because it's carnal it's sinful, it's debased, and so are our works. And so I thank God I live under grace and not the law because just the ankle flesh, God would have struck him down and killed him if he tried to walk up to his altar and his ankle flesh being shown. Now, that, 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 that's, that's, that's legal. I mean, you, that, 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 that's profound. That's God saying, that's my law. And thank God we're not under that strict law that anything, that would be carnal, he'd strike you dead. If that high priest went into the Holy of Holies with sin in his life, God would kill him. God oh. would kill him. Hey, Doug, I want to I want to speak to something, too, because I think that this is, look, here's the thing. We are trying to teach everyone to, number one, go to the Bible, to search it out to see whether these things be true, to learn how to pray and hear the voice of God, and you don't hear the voice of God until you go by way of the cross and, 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 and I would say uh, spirit-anointed repentance. That's where you're serious with God. But in Acts 2, 36, 37, 38, it says this, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, here's another deception. For a Christian to go back in and join Messiantic, and I'm saying Messiantic, Steve Zaret taught me that word, Messiantic or a Messianic church is an abrogation of the faith, and it is, in my opinion, it is basically absolute heresy for a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ to go back under the uh, law. And and here's here, this is neat. This is from my pastor friend John Kyle. He said, Steve, I do, do believe that this is another subtle false doctrine that people are flocking to. Messianic churches here in Billings and other places that strongly recommend all men be circumcised. It doesn't matter what their age is. They're doing all the old covenant practice and of course and don't use Jesus, just Yeshua and Yahweh. They are teaching that Ephesians 6 is Levi the priest and that the armor is actually Levi. That's baloney. I got news for you. I got a suit of armor, Doug, Joe, and David's seen it in my house. It stands at the foot of my stairs. It's Roman armor. And my gladius, which is a Roman sword, is probably the sharpest 
thing I've ever owned. So basically, uh, they teach against the Trinity. They teach against all this stuff. And, and look, I, let, let me just be candid. People do not know how to stand in the freedom. Stand fast in the liberty where would Jesus Christ has set you free. Now, if a Jewish person wants to say Yeshua HaMashiach, that's fine. But the book of Acts does not teach that. And if, if we go through the name of Jesus, and, and this is why it's critical, because seduction is ever so, uh, how would I say this, sinisterly sweet sounding, okay? When the woman says, come, let's share my bed together. When the devil says, you know, you can get away with that. For those of you that know the voice of God, I, uh, the voice of God and the voice of the devil, and I can assure you I know both of them, uh, God is always redemptive. And when you look at the name of Jesus, okay, just the name of Jesus, you're going to be uh, astounded that it is a controversial name because even to those who do not have salvation and want to make the works of the law, I got news for you, I'm already circumcised, okay? But some guy comes after me and, uh, with a knife, Doug, and I don't have, uh, well, forgive me, I haven't been circumcised. Trust me, he's going to meet Samuel Colt really quick, okay? I mean, <laughs> come on, it is so ridiculous. See, the deal is, is they don't understand the difference between the Old Testament and the New, the Old Covenant New, and I am not not antinomian. That means I don't believe that the law was done away with. I believe it was perfectly fulfilled in Jesus. And this is why the contempt against him infuriates me. And I believe there is a godly indignation. I don't care who it is. You know, somebody says, do you observe the feast? I say no, because every day in my world is a resurrection. Every day in my world is the birth of Jesus. And I, I understand that the significance of the feast, I understand Pentecost, Tabernacles, I understand that stuff. But I'm called to present the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lord God of Heaven who is triumphant. And then the Jewish people will send me an email and tell me, you can't say that name. You need to say Lord G hyphen D. I said, I've stood before his son, and as God has revealed himself to me, he's never told me that it's vain to call him the Lord God of Heaven. I use the name the Lord God of Heaven, but even that brings out the fury. Religious people will absolutely choke into eternal hell because they are more willing to win a, a religious point the walk in a relationship. Now, that's not true of all Messianic Jews. I'm not taking on Messianic Jews. I'm saying if you are a genuine Jew, then God bless you. Do the Jewish thing. If you're a Gentile, stay the, and I'm saying this, stay for all of heaven's sake away from being entrapped in that. Because the very gospel and the very book of Galatians teaches again that there is a combination David referred to it liberty is in the spirit death and bondage is in the flesh okay why you got to be circumcised okay and all of the different things because you're dealing with the flesh but God comes along through his son absolutely gives the lamb of God as a propitiation for our sins and says guess what now I'm going to circumcise your hearts you can have the best circumcision job in the world. Obviously, David and his mighty men took that job on in a battle, and I think those guys were hurting to the point where they probably welcomed death rather than being an old guy getting circumcised. And I'm not trying to be a wise guy, but the point is, it is ridiculous to have the king of glory, the fulfillment of law. How about this one? Lo, I come in the volume of the books, it is written of me, Jesus speaking, to do thy will, O God. Uh, does that maybe uh, set a few uh, uh, furs rubbed the wrong way? It most certainly did. Because even the high priest said, basically, I'll, I'll paraphrase this and then turn it back to Pastor Langford. It is expedient. It is expedient for us for the death of this man. He was saying this. It doesn't really matter if he's the son of God. It's better for us if we kill him because he's going to interrupt our party. Now, that is really colloquialized. But, David, is that not the case? Religion wants to basically keep people in bondage. Relationship with Jesus. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. To free to worship the Lord, free to walk in a conscience and subconscious under the blood of Jesus, free from condemnation. And the, the, can I say something? The loving of the, the neighbors. You know why? You can go into your chat room and, and see that even the people that will defend the Ten Commandments won't, won't practice it. Or the Matthew 18, Doug, you and I and, and, and Pastor Langford and others have been taken on by, quote, brethren who don't even understand Matthew 18. 
you go to your brother first. And then if he doesn't hear you, you take another brother with you. So the point is, is that there is so little relationship being taught that the people are drowning in their trespasses and sins. They're absolutely crying out. I, I don't know this. I know that there is a cry that God hears, the cry of the heart of his people. And that's what we're talking about tonight. You can listen to the cry of the masses and go their way, or you can listen to the cry of the Lord, which the Lord Jesus Christ says, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Pastor, is that not the most simple way to say it? It can't be said any more simple. I want to share a passage that Pastor John Kyle was saying about what they're doing out there in Montana. And there again, it's in the book of Galatians. That's all the book of Galatians deals with is the law and the spirit of Christ being born again. But in Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse 12, and that's why I give you the scriptures. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I say. I want you to hear the truth from God's word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. But in Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse 12, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. In other words, bearing your cross and following Jesus Christ is where true suffering comes, not because you are or are not circumcised, but because you follow Jesus or neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. That's what Paul says. None of them keeping it. Paul was a Pharisee. He didn't keep the law. He was a murderer. Thou shalt not kill. He was murdering Christians. So when he said no man's keeping the law, he was telling you the truth. When Moses came down off Mount Sinai and threw the Ten Commandments down and bursted them and broke every one of them, that was, that was prophetic. No man could keep the law. Every man would break the law. Every man would. That's why on top of the Ark of the Covenant was something called a mercy seat. And inside the Ark of the Covenant was Aaron's rod and the manna and uh, the Ten Commandments. And it was covered with the mercy seat because Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he hath saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's by the mercy of God. Let me go back to Galatians 6. Galatians 6 and 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I under the world. For in Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And Paul alluded to that, Second Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And as many as walk according to this rule, Peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And history says that verse there, don't let anybody trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. History says Paul was in a prison dungeon. He had his back toward the window and was reading the parchments. And a man walked by the window, the prison cell, and saw his back, how it had been beaten. And he began to scream at him, you must be a murderer. You must be a murderer. Anyone to have been beaten to the degree you've been beaten must be a murderer. And that's why Paul made this statement, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. He was a murderer at one time, but he wasn't anymore. And the marks on his back was because of persecution and suffering of preaching the cross of Christ. And, and so, again, the fundamental statement here tonight is simply this. Religion will damn you. If you think works will save you, you're already damned. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace 
are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus died and took away all bragging rights. Now all the bragging rights go to him. He paid the price, and all we have to do is believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. When the jailer, when, in, in Acts 16, when the Holy Ghost shook the jail and the prison doors flung open, the jailer was going to commit suicide. Discern in the darkness. He said, Sir, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Because the Roman law was, if you lose the prisoners, you must be executed yourself. And the man said to Paul, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He's a Gentile. He doesn't know anything about salvation. But the presence of God through the Holy Ghost that shook that jail cell, he sensed God's presence. He knew he was unholy. He knew he was unworthy. So he says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And here's all Paul said you have to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved by household. That's all he told him he had to do. And the story scriptures go on to say that the jailer took Paul home with him and washed him and Silas their wounds and, and uh, fed them, and then they were baptized. But Paul said, all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's how easy salvation is. But we've become pharisaical in trying to put all this stuff on people that you have to do this. Now, I believe once you get saved, you want to grow. You want to pray. You want to fast. You want to become spiritually minded. You, you want to know about the deep things of God. Why? Because you have a relationship now. And so you want to spend time with him. You want to study his word. You want to pray. You want to talk to him. You want him to talk to you. You want to fellowship. You want to commune. And uh, that's because we are saved. But the things that we do relative to seeking God has nothing to do with saving us. We just do that because we are saved. And, and, and I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. Well, you've you got to do this. You've got to do that. It, people say, well, you've got to be water baptized. Galatians 3 and 27 for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. He didn't say been baptized in Christ. He said been baptized into him. Christ, Christ's body is the church. See, the, the, the church is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I, I don't want to really get into all this tonight, but people say, well, the church is his bride. No. Uh, uh, Ephesians 1, 21 and 22 says, And have put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullest of him that filleth all in all. So the body of Christ is the church, and the bride of Christ is New Jerusalem. And uh, so people just... I don't know where they get all the false doctrine. They're just listening to the wrong people. Uh, but it's clear in Ephesians 1 and also in Colossians chapter 1 that the church is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when you get out of the body, and that is, that, that's the true church, the body of Christ, when you get out of that, that's when you get into problems and you get into things that are, are erroneous, that are error. And uh, that's why we're in the condition we're in. That's why people sitting in churches today are as lost uh, as Muslims are, because they're not hearing the true word of God in this hour. And that's the danger. That's the danger, folks. You know, Doug, one of the things that I want to share, too, and this is a critical, because this is why there's power and authority in the name of Jesus, okay? Talking, and, and this is something that people have got to read their Bibles. See, that's what we're, de we're saying this. We, we read our Bibles. We basically are aware that the Word of God is a plumb line. It's our blueprint for life. And the thing is, is that, in, in, in again, Philippians chapter 2, starting of 9, this 9, 10, 11, Wherefore, God has also highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him a name which is above every other name. 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, here's where this comes in. It's a question of power. It's a question of authority. It's a question of responsibility. And the result is effectiveness. People try and be cute, okay? Well, I can't be cute with the name of Jesus. When I say the name of Jesus, I see literally the king of glory sitting on the right hand of God the Father. Now, no man has seen God, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying Jesus. Yet I see Jesus in his exalted capacity, in his redemptive giving it for us, the life of God. See, this is what blew my mind even as a pagan who, who absolutely knew how to party hardy, is that God would, in its essence, he, he said, I made a mistake. Sin entered into the human race, so I'm going to take on myself all the sins of the world. When I heard that, I thought, now, Steve, you're, a, you're, you know, you're smart enough to know a good deal. That's the greatest deal in the universe being offered to you. You, and I said to myself, this is a conversation that took place, you of all know, people know what a complete debauched wreck you are. And I, these are the words, I, I pray like this. You, you've got to hear me pray. And the thing is, is that it came into my heart that if only the God of heaven, who had set the terms for my redemption, my release, and my salvation, if he's going to do that, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. And I took it freely. The reason, I don't think people know this, but uh, I think, uh, who was it? Uh, uh, somebody sent me an email saying that Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, referred to Jesus as a Nazarene. Whenever you hear the Nazarene, it is a giveaway that that person is a Luciferian or a Satanist. Now, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth is where he came from, but the Nazarene, it is so uh, fitful and fateful. Now, here's why. I want everybody to know this. The reason why the Christians must be destroyed, they're not going to succeed. They're going to kill a lot of people, but they're not going to succeed, is because the Christian has the amazing and I guess you'd say a uh, wonderful and blessed opportunity to say the name that these entities cannot even name, because at the name of Jesus, they know. They know, okay? They know. The fallen angels know. The demons know. They know that they are all going to bow. So what do you do when you want to not deal with a pleasant thought or you got to deal with something? You put it out of your mind, Okay. The bottom line is, is they can put it out of their mind, they can put it out of their mouth. But if the Christians want to have power, it is in the name of Jesus. If the Christians want to have power, it is in the Holy Spirit. And that will bring us, Pastor Langford, to the point in the next hour. You cannot fight in the spiritual realm in your own strength of knowledge, in your own wisdom. And there are more Christian Gnostics and Gnosis is basically knowledge in Greek, and there are people that believe because they have the knowledge of their Savior, they're saved. It has nothing to do with knowledge. It has everything to do with relationship. I can have a lot of knowledge of a lot of things, but it doesn't do me any good if I'm not wise enough to apply myself. You can have all the facts in the world. You can know a lot of stuff, but unless you apply your heart to wisdom, it doesn't do any good. And that's why in Proverbs chapter 8, if you go to Proverbs chapter 8 and every place it says, I wisdom, Paul tells us in Corinthians that Jesus Christ has made the wisdom of God to us who are saved. So when we lack wisdom, what are we told to do? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and doesn't upbraid. That means God's not a tight one. And, I, I, and you'll enjoy this, Pastor. I said, Lord, you're not a tightwad, but why do I meet so many who claim to know you that are tight And I'm not talking about people giving money for this or that. I'm just talking about I have, I have seen uh, generosity that reflects the kingdom of God, and I have seen, and I'm talking primarily uh, televangelists. I've told the story, David, and this is a great story. Morris Sorello called one day, one of his ladies, wanting to uh, get some money for us from a donation. And they were talking, and, you know, Brother uh, Quayle, and actually they talked to my wife, and then they called me, too. I think they thought I would, you know, give them more than my wife would, and she gave them nothing. 
And, and my wife said to them, well, let me ask you a question. I can't pay my bills, so can I call you and will you give me money to pay my bills? Well, no, no, Mrs. Quayle, you must trust the Lord. And then my wife fired back and said, shouldn't you also trust the Lord? <laughs> and the point was well taken, okay? And uh, the, the thing is is that we're seeing tonight, we're seeing the, I would say this, Pastor, we are being given a blessed opportunity to in, 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 in literally set some people free that have been in chains of confusion, chains of bondage, religious chains, okay? And the point being is, is that some people don't simply know the freedom that's in Jesus. Look, I'm a sinner. I can't, you know, I would like to not sin as much as I do. I'm working on that. But I don't lose track of the fact that I am forgiven when I repent. If we confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what we're trying to tell everybody tonight. Look, there's a freedom. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Jesus Christ has set you free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I would say the word, David, that God gave you, was it two years ago? And I, I don't remember the year, but, you know, bondage and then comes captivity, right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. you get free of the bondage, and you do not have the same captive captivity that is going to face a lot of people. And that's, that's, that's where I'll give it back to you, Pastor, because, again, the point in being is this, is, as I, listen, it's the book of Revelation. Every time I'm on national talk radio, somebody say, well, doesn't it say something about that, the book of Revelation? The book of the Revelation that God gave to his servant John is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to his servant John. It's not the revelation of bad stuff though there's bad stuff that's contained in the book of Revelation. And the spirit of or the testimony of Jesus, spirit of prophecy. That's why there's so many false prophets and prophetesses. They, you know, they spell it P-R-O-F-I-T-E-S-S -S and P-R-O-F-I-T-S-S because that's all they care about, you know. I'm going to get me a $375,000 silver anniversary Rolls Royce. So when I drive it through McDonald's, this is a little televangelist, I want those people to say, there goes a man of God. Well, they probably say, man, I think the guy having afforded that can probably should probably eat a little better diet. But it's see, such a foolish thing. It's ha, such a ha, foolish ha, thing. Ha, have they no shame? I, I mean, seriously, okay. If it, and I ask this, I, I ask this uh, in, in a very serious manner. Have these people no shame? Uh, having a church, a mega church, uh, and, and drive Bentleys. You, uh, is 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 that not the um, antithesis of of uh, of being a good steward uh, of God? Uh, and, and I'm serious when I ask that question, Pastor. It's hypocrisy. It's everything that Steve was saying. The reason these people they're hypocrites. They're hypocrites. Matthew twenty three four. Oh, uh, they, for they bind heavy burdens, grievous to be borne. They lay them upon men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Like the guy was telling Loretta, Steve's wife, give us money. No, you trust God. That, he, Jesus said they would they'd put a burden on your shoulders so heavy you can't bear it, but they are hypocrites because they won't bear it. They wouldn't bear, they wouldn't bear the same burden if you asked them. See, but that's because Jesus, the whole 23rd chapter of Matthew, he, I don't know how many times he uses the phrase, Oh, you hypocrites, because they're two-faced. They're two-faced. You know, we, we, I know Steve supports people. We support people. We, we do all sorts of things. We sow money all the time into other people's lives and ministries. But call another ministry and ask them to help you. I, it, it don't exist because their God is their belly, Paul said. See, it's greed, it's covetousness, and because of that, they have erred from the faith. The word erred there in 1 Timothy 6 and 10 means they have been seduced from the faith. And thus, if you listen to those people, you too will be brought under the same bondage that they're in. See, that's why they're called false teachers. They're false. They're, 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 they've been seduced, and they take this teaching, and they seduce other people. That's how it works. It, 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 we're converts of Christ. They're, they're converts of, of something else. 
but I want to be a convert of the Lord Jesus Christ and none other. And these men are converting them, you know, Brigham Young. They're, they're converting people to themselves, what they are. And we're trying to tell people, not us, Jesus. And we're not pointing you to us. We're pointing people to Jesus. I know it's the top of the hour, Doug. Yeah, exactly. And, boy, what a distinction that is, by the way, folks, if you really think about that. Uh, uh, folks, you're listening to the Hagman Hagman Report on this very special Saturday edition, day before Mother's Day. If you have a mom, uh, definitely reach out and give her a big hug. Spend some time, quality time with your mom tomorrow, if in fact you have a mom. And if you don't, accept my sympathies. Folks, we're going to be back up with these messages. With us is Steve Quayle, internationally renowned author, and of course, Pastor David Langford, the voice of evangelism.com. So humble to have him both with us. Stay with us. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our special Saturday edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. We are in our third and final hour with special guest Steve Quayle and Pastor David Langford. Tonight we've been talking about the great seduction, submitting to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils, and the danger that that brings in the subtlety and the different ways and subtle ways that they come. Uh, Steve and Pastor Langford, it's been a, a very interesting first two hours. You, Where do you guys want to take it from here? Go ahead, Steve. Steve, are you there? Uh, Pat, Pastor, I think uh, Steve is not back yet, but uh, okay. he, he, you know what, Pastor? Um, well, go ahead. Let me say this. Um, go ahead. Talk, talking about the seducing spirits. Yeah. I think you were going to, going to go down the same path I was, so, so go ahead and take it. Yeah, some of the, the uh, subtle ways I was saying that you can be uh, pulled into this, um, these seducing spirits. You know, twisting the word, as, as Pastor Langford was talking about in the first hour. Uh, why do people twi twist um, Scripture? Uh, why do they want it to be different or have a different interpretation than it's supposed to? We're told in the in the Bible that no prophecy is a, of any private interpretation. It is uh, due to the fact that people are rebellious by nature. Yeah, exactly. We're humans. It almost seems too that that people just want to convolute the most simplest of things. It's it just I don't know. Is it our yeah. nature? And then there's an evil element that does this on purpose. I mean, there's those that don't do it on purpose also. Right. Right. And that's why we need to be so careful when we're talking about doctrine that we never intentionally um, misrepresent or twist a, a word of the Bible. But it does happen um, when you don't even mean to do it. Sometimes you could read. Uh, at some verses and, and get a different interpretation than I could. But what we need to understand is that all things can be clarified through the Lord and through prayer. Hey, hey God said it. I believe it. That's it. Period. To me. So See, that was, with that was the whole ahead. issue in the garden. The devil twisted God's word and placed even a position of making either the devil a liar or the god or god a liar and she made god a liar and so that's why people do what they do as you so well said joe it's rebellion it's not going god's way we don't have an agenda just like you guys we i don't have an agenda i'm not trying to persuade anybody to circumcision or judaizer that's why we preach jesus christ him crucified and the word of god and that's it. That's it. And the Word will correct us. Second Timothy three sixteen seventeen says all Scripture. That means Old and New Testament. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be perfect or mature, truly furnished unto all good works. So if we're in error. The Word will correct us if we'll stay in the Word. Say, most of the stuff that people listen to is not Bible. Say, but yet the Bible will address their error to show us how to get out of it. 
uh, and I'm going to turn it back over to you, but I want to give a scripture here in Second uh, Peter 2 and 19. While they, he's talking about false prophets, false prophetess, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. So if you listen to these people, you're brought under the same bondage that, that they are under. See, that's why you see so many false religions. you got people out here on bicycles and you name it. I mean, they're out here knocking on doors because it's a cult. It never was birth from the heart of God. You know, Joseph Smith. See, God knew that Joseph Smith would come along and tell you he got a revelation from an angel. See, he, so now we've got the Book of Mormons. Why? Because this man says, I have received another book, another testament from God through this angel. So God, knowing that would come to pass, says in the book of Galatians, most of what we're saying tonight is coming out of the book of Galatians, but in Galatians 1 and uh, 6 through 8, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that would trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So the foreknowledge of God knew Joseph Smith would say, I got this from an angel. So when Paul is unctionized by the Holy Ghost to write the book of Galatians, he says, guess what? If I or an angel, so he's already addressing that heresy that would come, what, in the 1800s? So, see, God foreknew these things. So he gave us the scriptures to negate those things. Go ahead. Wow. Wow. Steve. Well, I, you know, one of the things that I think is interesting, uh, Pat, I don't know who Pat is, she said, Steve, and, and this is critical to understand, spiritual warfare, seduction, this is why, Doug, and I just want to, I've sent this to you, but I don't want to read this. Steve, who is praying over the chat room on the Hagman and Hagman show? My, oh, wow, oh my, tonight was my first time checking in the chat room, and I had to leave three times. Okay, oh my, I'll pray for those chatting there. I only ask God to give me the endurance and strength. Hmm, I have little room, time, or energy for that. Oh, my. Do you see what is going on, even the midst of your broadcast? And she said, ugh. Of course I see that, you know. And, 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 and Pat, here's what my position is. Because we're talking about Jesus, all of hell will manifest through its puppets. For those of you who are in the chat room, again, I say the Lord God of heaven rebuke you. You forbid the people to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. You strain at a gnat to swallow a camel. And I thank God for Pastor Bruce York's word and, and Linda, who is a lady that sent me a prophecy, because those of you who continue into this, you're going to have an Ananias and Sapphira moment. And it won't be me, and it won't be Pastor Langford. You either grow up or get out of the chat room. You devils, in the name of Jesus, the Lord God of heaven rebuke you. May your tongues cleave to the roof of your mouth. May you be smitten with deafness and dumbness until you repent. Because, again, what's astonishing me, Doug, is just this, is that, you know, you and Joe, you provide a forum. Obviously, we know God has used your show, is using your show to get truth out in a fashion form and in a way that others don't. But these devils, and they're devils, they'll strain at a gnat to swallow a camel. And the people that are looking for public opinion or a consensus are already doomed. You're looking in the wrong way. I, I see it all the time. Well, what do you guys think about this passage of Scripture? Well, they're the wrong people to ask because the blind usually can't help the blind. What we're trying to instill tonight is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, discerning of spirits, because there is a spirit of seduction. There is a spirit of deception. There is a spirit of antichrist. What's taking place right now, Doug, in your own chat room, by the way, if God would open our eyes, and, and this is not scolding, I'm just saying this is an object lesson, is literally it's filled with 
God's people and demons from hell. And the demons are manifesting through their hosts, and they, those people need to get either set free or basically find another place to spew their venom. But they will stay there because, isn't it amazing too, Doug? I'm sure you and Joe must talk about this. I know David and I do. These people that always want to, you know, bust our chops because we talk about Jesus, yet they still have to come back, and I'll tell you why. And I'll say this to all of you in the name of Jesus. Those of you in the chat room that are taking on this word, the Lord knows how to preserve the day and knows how to preserve the wicked under the day of judgment. I said, Lord, why do you let this go on? And he said, simple, Steve, by their fruits you shall know them, and I'm allowing their evil fruit to come to fruition. So I'm just I just wanted to share that because see even as we're talking tonight when when Jesus himself had to say Satan get thee behind me that literally meant follow after me. So David will make a point based on the word, I'll make a point based on the word, we'll share out of our personal experience and after four years or four four years, forty years in the desert, I know a little bit about sand scorpions and what you gotta deal with in the desert, okay? After these many years of being an evangelist and a pastor for all those years, David knows the makeup of most people, and he has been charged with bringing the word of God under the anointing to break the yoke of bondage. Yet most people will worship the chains as opposed to worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, who has the key to unlock them from their chains and set them free. That's what the scripture says. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. He who the devil binds is bound in eternity, unless a power greater than the devil overtakes the power that most people submit themselves to. Very you well know, said. It, Go ahead, Pastor. It's, it's amazing, uh, the 23rd chapter, I alluded to that a lot, the 23rd chapter of Matthew, but verse 13 said, The Lord of you hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Some years ago, a lady came to our church, she came down to the altar, she was demon-possessed, I laid my hands on her. She fell back in the floor. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, She's tricking you. She's trying to deceive you. She doesn't want to be delivered. And the most unqualified person in the natural came up to the pulpit and said, The Lord told me to give you this verse, and I don't know why. But the gentleman gave me 2 Corinthians 11, but I fear, lest by any means, as serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. That was a confirmation what the Spirit placed on my heart about this person didn't want to be delivered. They, they, they were feigning deliverance, but they weren't, because that's not what they wanted. When you want deliverance, God will deliver you. The demoniac came and fell down and worshipped Christ. He wanted deliverance. And he got deliverance because he wanted to be set free from that. Uh, One man brought his son uh, to to the disciples, and uh, they couldn't cast the demon out. And Jesus cast the demon out. And then the disciples said, why could we not cast the demon out? He said, this kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting. So fasting and prayer brings the power of God because fasting breaks down the carnality of any of us. You fast long enough, you become very weak. Uh, You don't run your mouth as much. You don't say half the things you would even think about saying because you're getting broken down. But as as the physical man is being broken down, the spiritual man is soaring to heights. He's never soared before. By Jesus, this kind, which which see religious people, see the disciples were religious too. See, they, they had their own, they wanted to call fire down out of heaven and kill people. They, there's all sorts of things they wanted to do. He said, Jesus said, you don't even know what spirit you're of. But they had to learn and had to grow. And, and see, they were being religious. You know, there was one man preaching in Jesus' name, and they said, well, they said to Jesus, well, he's not following us. He said, if they, they either are for us or they're against us. And, and, and that man was for Christ, but because he was not of their entourage, the disciples got upset with that because they were religious. you got to remember, these men had been brought up and nurtured under Pharisees, 
Jesus was trying to break all of that in their own lives. They were under a type of bondage themselves. They were Jews, folks. They were Judaizers. That's why Peter had the confrontation with Paul in Galatians 2. When he's with the Gentiles, he's eating pork chops. But when he goes back around the Jews, he says, you can't eat pork chops. And Paul was stood into his face. He said, you're causing this contention, Peter. And then God gave him the vision in Galatians 10. I mean, uh, Acts 10. I, I said, I'll call clean is clean. So he was having to break that bondage in those disciples' lives. That's why he took them under his care. Because they were inundated with this legalism and Phariseeism. Because they would go to the temple and do just like everybody else. Jesus was trying to break that in their lives. And, of course, they finally got free from it. And they got free from it when they got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's what brought the fullness of the deliverance. Steve uh, uh, quoted from Acts 2.36, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know us surely. That same Jesus whom you crucified, God, hath made him both Lord and Christ. Peter, 50 days before, that's cursing and swearing and said, I don't know the man. After Pentecost, he said, he's our Savior. Because he, he got through that spirit of religion. Because the spirit of Christ made him a new creature. See, Jesus knew he was going to fail. He said, Simon Peter, Satan hath desired to have you, that he might sift you as sweet. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. You're, you're going through a conversion process. You're going to convert. And when you are fully converted, strengthen your brethren. Not with Pharisee, a um, uh, Pharisee's mindset, but with my word and with my spirit. And, and, and so that's the difference. And, and, and these other people, you know, I really feel sorry for them. You know, because when somebody is deceived, they are confident they are right. But they are totally wrong. And that's the danger of deception. But when you start fasting and praying, God will break those religious spirits. I was taught the pre-trib rapture. As I begin to fast and pray, so I can help other people know the truth. See, God gave gifts unto men, and I don't say this to to, to, to be self-serving or, or, or to be self-accolade. But when He said He gave gifts unto men, Joe and Doug and Steve and myself are gifts to the body of Christ. He has gifted us. To do things And it, it's not our gift It's something he gave And we just share it Anybody that has a gift Carving wood That person can be such a blessing To so many people Because of the gift And the talent that God has given them And ours just is in another vein It's the scripture, it's the word of God But it is a gift And, 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 and then people will Criticize the gift Find fault in the gift Like people do you know, Christmas time. Well, you didn't spend enough money on my gift. But that, see, that, that's bigotry. That's self righteousness. It, it's not the gift, as they say. It's the fault. See, but that's that's the carnality, and it's oh, it's so it's religious to no end, and, and, and that's what Christ came to destroy, and that's why He took the disciples under His arm for three and a half years and taught them. Throughout the scripture, we see he, the, the, the phrase, he taught them. He was educating them. He was training them in spiritual things. And that's all we're trying to do here tonight. Well, well if, I can ask a, if I can ask this question then sure. uh, to Steve or Pastor, what do you recommend? Uh, well, Steve, let me ask you this, because I think we've had this conversation before. It, we, we, t tomorrow, of course, is Sunday. You're going to have people, Christians uh, throughout North America, worldwide, going to church, or, well, uh, North America anyway, uh, going to uh, church services tomorrow, hearing uh, hearing the word of God, and hopefully, as it's supposed to be taught. But, but then you're going to have that element, of course, where the word of God is not taught in the manner it should be. In, 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 so, so what do you recommend? Where, what do we need to do here? How can we fix this? We've got to fix this somehow, right? I mean, we can't let this go no, on. We can't fix it. Here's the deal. It's the separating of the sheep and the goats going on right now. It's just as in Moses' day. You had two guys that, that stood up to withstand him. 
and the famous statement is who is on the lord's side you know god moses was instructed to say everyone come here see this is where it's this is where the what is that old statement the rubber meets the road this is not going to get better it's only going to get worse and that's what Pastor Langford was saying earlier on in the show. He was saying point blank that there's going to become a famine unlike anything. And what's interesting about, here's an interesting uh, statement. Famine in the word produces famine in the land. And I better make this statement. I am impressed. I am constrained. I am totally being bound to say, and I, I don't mean bound as tied up, but I mean just impressed almost to the point of a pressure cooker to tell people, the food they have taken for granted next year at this time will be available, but it will be at prices that will have priced everyone out of the market. The famine for the word of God, hey, Jesus basically made it. He said he is the bread that came down from heaven. That's why we celebrate communion. But the point being, Doug, is, is that there's no way. Here, here's the. I'd say this is where I differ with most men of God and almost everyone. It doesn't make me right, but this is the message that God has given me ever since Pastor Langford has known me. I have given one message before America is destroyed by the Russians and the Chinese. Nobody even th saw them on the horizon 20 years ago. God was going to make known the sins of the leaders of America, the people, and the people's sins to their God. But you understand, God's people don't even care about the sins of our leaders. They don't care about murder. They don't care about corruption. They don't care about about bondage. They don't care about uh, uh, you know abortion, murder. They don't care about the poor. And by the way. Uh, you know, I'm the guy warning, 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 warning to the vets. This day was coming. Doug, you used to hear me, and I remember Pastor Langford. I'm not just saying whoopee. I'm not grandstanding. I'm saying, look, when God gave me the uh, calling to be a watchman, I never thought I would have never signed up for the deal. By the way, especially with the ridicule and the slander and the gossip and the hate, the threats of murder, the actions against me, all that stuff. The bottom line is, I just wouldn't have signed up for it. But by the grace of God and intercessors, I love you all, intercessors. Praise God, good friends. Dave and I have been friends twenty years, and 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 when I go have a question, you know, I mean, he doesn't tell me what I want to hear; he tells me what I need to hear or my friends that God brings into my life. But look, it's craziness, okay? There's craziness in the land. And every day we're hearing more about the Department of Homeland Security. I used to say, Lord, what's it going to take to get your people to recognize that, that they're in the sights, okay? And, and what I mean by in the sights, ladies and gentlemen, let me make it very clear. You will be coming to a point in your life where you will either have to fight in the spiritual and in the physical, to maintain a life, if, you dip, if you're going to stick up for the faith you have or you're going to have to roll over, take the mark of the beast and be damned. It isn't any easier, uh, forgive me, and it isn't any more complicated than that. When I started talking about genetic Armageddon, when I started talking about all of the different issues that would be here, it's one thing for all these guys to come on the scene and claim that, but where were they 20 years ago? When I started talking about it, and and I, I I've got to put to 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 death a rumor. There's a new one out on the internet that Yellowstone has got explosives planted in it, and that it's going to blow. Let me share this. I talked to special operations guys several years ago, and I said, the, were there nukes planted in Yellowstone? They said yes. Have they been diffused, found, etc.? They said yes. So what there is is, is is this rehashing of Bravo Sierra BS. And it, it's everything, you know, there, here's, what, here's what I'm trying to say. The best instructor in the world is the Holy Spirit. I can't tell everyone what to do. I basically get probably dozens, if not three or four dozen, daily of what should I do. Here's my situation. I don't have any money, blah, blah, blah. Let me make it easy for everybody tonight. Faith first, get right with Jesus, and then food first. And when you go with food, the corollary is water. Whatever you're going to store in water, you store more water than you could even imagine. If you think you've got enough at one times what you already possess, then multiply it by three and you might have a good start. But you need to have a way of collecting water, 
pumping water without power, meaning a hand pump, having indigenous water, meaning it originates as a spring on your property, not flowing through your property. And these are just the basic things. And so when we're talking about getting set, if, if people don't hunger for the word of God, they will hunger for the very staff of life. And the scripture basically says, when a nation as ours has sinned so grievously before a holy God, most people don't even understand what the word holy is. Holy isn't what you don't do. Holy is an aspect of God's emanation of who he is. As David said, you couldn't even go into the holy of holies. You couldn't even walk up to the labor and, and, and you, know, you had to go up on a ramp you know, so that your nakedness wasn't discovered. Flesh is death. Yet the people in this country don't understand they're on the menu. I'm saying that. They're on the menu, Doug. I went into great detail after holding it for 40 years until God gave me the reach to say to you, if you've ever had a dream or a vision, and not a vision after your own heart, but one that the Lord shows you what the future holds, and it's scriptural, all of the cannibalism, the blood, the gore, the absolute disgustingness of the times ahead, and then you get these these entities in the chat room. And look, I'm not picking on you, Doug, when I say this, but when the Lord says address them against you, I do address them in the name of Jesus Christ. I command every unclean spirit, every lying spirit, every foul spirit, every uh, shill, every uh, plant in that chat room, in the name of Jesus, I ask, Lord, that you would absolutely give them a vision of hell, Lord. Let them smell the sulfur of their own where they're weeping and gnashing of teeth, in Jesus' name. We are vying for people's eternal well-being. David is a pastor, he's an evangelist, he's a preacher, he's a teacher, okay? And what we're trying to get is the people to wise up, to grow up. But I, I'm afraid, Doug, can I say something? It's like we come on and tell everybody that the steamrollers are coming and they're going to be, you know, squashed, and then they absolutely want to stand in front of the steamroll to see if Pastor Langford or Steve really know what we're talking about. Ever since I've gone on the radio, and I am getting angry now, and I'm sorry, I've told people, take it to the Lord in prayer. I've learned you can't even say that because they won't do that. So how do we get their attention? We give them the word of God. For those who have ears to hear, it will enter into their heart. They will respond. For those who do not have ears to hear, I don't know how many chances they get. That's between them and the Lord. But the lateness of the hour demands people's personal accountability and God does not wink at sin. The United States hangs in a breath. And I don't care if you have a million men marching on Washington, D.C., 210. They don't care. They'll kill them all. And I'm not against it. I'm just saying you've got to understand the Christians are in the crosshairs. The gun owners are in the crosshairs. The homeschoolers, the constitutionalists, the libertarians, anybody other than them is the enemy. And let me go on record one more time because there are police listening to this all over the country and obviously intelligence agencies and everything else. But the reason there are no rounds, bullets, ammunition available for the police departments is I have told you guys for 20 years some of you have only heard it for the first time recently, but you are going to be murdered after you are basically used to go out and do the dirty work, and then they turn the foreign guns on you. And I don't know how to make that any clearer. And, Doug, I was the first guy to say that, and I was, that the DHS is buying up all the ammunition to keep it out of the hands of uh, 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 civilians, and I got a bunch of piss ants moaning, okay? That's a good, a good word. That was Gene Scott's favorite word. I think I'll adopt it. The thing is, is that they, they oh, how could you know that? Simple, because the guys that are doing it are calling and telling either Doug Hagman, Doug, me, or others I know. So the thing is, is that... We, we, we suspend belief, yet embrace unbelief. We call that which is good evil, and that which is evil good. And what's necessary is a group of men and women to stand up, rise up in the power of the Holy Ghost, and take this thing on, head on. Not in the power of our anger, Steve, not in the power of our frustration, but in the direction and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And when God gave to Moses the plans for the tabernacle. He said, Moses, see that you build it exactly, not 
kind of close or partially close, but exactly as I have shown you. We need this specific battle plan for specific lives. It's true in prepping. It's true in preparation. It's true in getting our families on board. Look, we're at the worst time in history, and even as that approaches us, as the sword of Damocles no longer hangs over our head, but it's rapidly falling to take our heads off, that's not a metaphor, it's a real statement, we still are basically talking about, do you have a nice sword that was hanging over our head for so long? We deny what's obvious, we embrace the obscure, and we turn from the only one who has the words of life, who shed his blood for life, and I make no apologies for the Lord Jesus Christ. I am sorry that people are offended, and I will say to those of you again, blessed are those of you who have ears to hear and eyes to see, for the Holy Spirit of God has opened your eyes and ears, else you could not have seen, nor could you have heard. Pastor. Oh, I was thinking while you were talking about how you said God shared with you he would show the nation, the the leaders' sins, and we're constantly witnessing it. I mean, there's Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky, uh, Whitewater, uh, uh, Joe Aparo, the sheriff in Arizona, his, and or some are retired FBI agents. Uh, that certificate of Obama is a fake. Um, John Kerry builds a yacht. Park it in another state to save six hundred thousand dollars a year in tax. We're seeing every day so much sin in this nation. Weiner up there, the congressman, pictures of himself. And, and, and Steve, what God told you, right in front of the people, but they still don't see it. They still don't get it. They realize, or that's that's the wrong word. They see how foul and profane these people are. Benghazi, it's all over the place, but the people act like it doesn't even exist. And God is sending signals telling us, this is how wicked your government is. Your leaders are so vile and so wicked. You know, we, 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 got, we got mega church guys who are, are, are homosexuals, you know, and, 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 and adulterers and, and, and whatever else. And the people flock right there behind them. It don't mean one thing. You know, uh, uh, the the black pastor down there in Atlanta uh, having uh, homosexual relationships. Uh, the people, you know, still praise and laud. It just goes on. It's all over the place. And God is showing us. But it's like we're blind. We, we still don't see it. Though we hear it on the news, we see it. And yet it does not affect us in the right way. I believe what it does, Steve, is it, it calluses us even more. And they become harder. And, and though God brings out more profane things, the people still aren't moved. We, we look at the look at the consistent leadership that we keep getting in this nation. We keep voting these people in. And I know some of the voting the, the system is, is is crooked and everything else. But the point is, it's before us, and yet we can't see it. And it's happening. Every, you know, Geithner, oh my my my, my turbo tax deal messed up. Uh, it, it, it's just all the time. They lied to us. Henry Paul, uh, Hank, uh, uh, what was it? Paul, uh, Hank Paulson. Paulson. Yeah, yeah. They, Hank they lied, Paulson. Yeah, yeah. They lied to us about this money in 2008. I mean, it, it never stops. It's every day we turn the news on. It's another lie. Another, it's another sham. And there, God is showing us, like what you said the Lord told you, but the people don't see it because they have eyes to see and they see not. And uh, that's why all we can say tonight to the people is you must humble yourself and talk and commune with God, and God will show you the way. He will show you the truth. He will show you who's really telling you the truth, and he'll show you who's not telling you the truth. You know, I, it don't take me long to, because of the spirit of truth in my life. It doesn't take me long to figure out what's right and what's wrong. I don't, you, you know, that Todd Bentley. I had people emailing me, writing me when they had this big revival down in Florida. And I took one of my radio programs and addressed it. And then the guy come out to be an, an adulterer. He was, he was having committing adultery during the whole revival. How can you not see? 
because they don't want to see. And as I said earlier, that's why false prophets are flourishing because our society is crumbling. It's this this the it's the chicanery. The Ponzi, look at the Ponzi schemes in this nation. Every day there's another Ponzi scheme. How do people get into that mess? Because of their own personal greed. If it's too good to be true, it's, it's not real. But yet they'll do it every time. They'll do it every time. And, and yet then when they find out they've been duped, I can't believe that. Well, you believed it because you believed a lie. Everybody that gave Matt off money was putting money in something that wasn't real. I mean, I've had people try to get me to invest in stuff and say, we're going to give you a 300% return in 90 days. If that was true, I'd borrow every dime I could, but it's a lie. And yet, yet it's before us, and seemingly we just can't see it. And uh, the only way to know the truth is to seek the truth. And uh, that's why, I, more than ever before, you need to know your Bible. You need to know. I tell businessmen, you need to read the book of Proverbs because it's a book of wisdom to teach you how to deal. I tell, when I pray, I say, God, I can't deal with the, the, the subtlety of this world. Help me to maneuver through this maze so that I'm not snared, that I'm not trapped. Because I'm telling you, uh, the Bible says, in the 18th chapter of Luke, for the children of this, or 16 and 8, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And you're dealing with people because they have a spirit of cunningness, a spirit of craftiness. That's why the Antichrist is going to succeed with all power, signs, and lying wonders. It's demonic power to intentionally deceive you. And if you don't have the spirit of truth... You can't recognize it when it's manifest. And so seeking the Lord and staying in his word is how you will know the truth. That's why I give you the scriptures, because when I read the scriptures, they answer the questions for me that I have relative to the end times, false prophets, false teachers. Uh, The scriptures speak to me and show me those things. And if you don't know your Bible, then you're not going to know how to deal with it when it comes. But when it comes and you know the truth, that's like they tell me, the, the ladies at the bank, the tellers, they can't teach them all the fake money, but they know the real money so well when anything comes through that's fake, they can detect it. But that's the same way with the scriptures. And if you know the scriptures, when something comes along that's not of God, and, and, and Steve gave you that whole passage tonight in First John chapter 4, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. That word try means to judge it, whether it's good or evil. Jesus said you either make the tree good and its fruit good, or you make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. No in-between. It's it's either on or it's off. And what we want to do is live right there in the middle ground. And uh, as, as Steve said, Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? Moses didn't say who's on my side. Moses said who's on the Lord's side? Because he knew if you're on the right side, you're going to win, no matter what happens. That's right. And they've been able, through obscuring the lines of what's right and wrong and morality, uh, they the, the seducing spirits play on our weaknesses as humans uh, in the flesh. And they incrementally get to your mind and, and make you think in a way that you shouldn't be thinking. And the only way to prevent from going down that road is the foundation being solid and never wavering from that foundation. The, the, the Bible, to me, is like the guidelines in any 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 uh, game that you play, basketball, football, baseball. They're there to protect the integrity of the game. The Word of God is to protect the integrity of Christianity because the devil, see, that's why they call them cheaters. Well, you cheated. You you know you you bent the rules. Men can rewrite the Bible if they want. They, I mean, they got the new Queen James version, and they took all references of homosexuality out of the scriptures. But that don't change the truth. They may rewrite the Bible to 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 fit their sins, just like that Queen James version. But they did that to to sue their own conscience about the real truth. So they came up with their own truth, which is a lie. 
But that's because that's what they wanted. They wanted a lie and not the truth. And thus God said, for this cause, he'll send them strong delusion. And so the problem becomes compounded not only from deception, but now God says, I'm going to let you believe, uh, I'm going to send a delusion on you. And uh, it, 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 if you don't walk in Christ and in his word, it don't get better, folks. It gets worse. It, you know, Who would have believed in 1963 when John F. Kennedy was assassinated? I was in the third grade. The, the principal came over the intercom and said that our president had been assassinated. And Miss Taylor, I remember, she got the Bible and she read some scriptures. She said, now let's pray. Try to do that in school today. That's a good point. It's not going to happen. And, and, and I sense this, uh, Pastor and, and Steve, I sense this, especially Steve. You began calling out as a watchman when you saw the cloud in the distance and you warned that the cloud, that dust cloud that was forming, wasn't a dust storm, but a, but an army of uh, an army of antagonists uh, against the against the body of Christ. And you know that same dust cloud now has breached the outer defenses, the outer walls. Now, you know we're fighting them off on the inner walls. And at what point do we lay down our swords and say, okay, or what? Or I'm sorry, at what point do we pick up our swords and start? And instead of warning, start fighting. I mean, we, and, and it, it, yeah, I got to tell you, it, it, look, I have not been a watchman, uh, it, it, and I'm not even sure that, that that's a that's an accurate uh, statement about being a watchman. At least I try to be, uh, but I'm also trying to find the resignation papers, and and the, <laughs> I can't find them anywhere um, because it is it's so frustrating that, that Pastor, you mentioned this. The the, the 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 so many numerous things where we're being lied to at every step of the way, uh, whether it be about Obama, his identity, whether it's about regardless, whether it's about the Federal Reserve, the Ponzi scheme there, the economy, everything's a lie. At, at what point? I don't even know what what question to ask, except to say, at what point are, are people gonna gonna realize what's happening to them? Well, let, let me say it like this: You don't have to run to the battle; the battle's coming to you. That's why Paul said, "Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth." We are witnessing it every day, and it's encroaching. First, it's our liberties, and this and that. But you don't have to run out here and jump into it. It's coming to your door. This tide of iniquity is coming in on us. And whether it's through the Obamacare, you can't get treatment, the death panels, or the 16,000 IRS agents to enforce this, you're controlling your checking account, your money, it's coming. But you're going to have to stand. That's, that's the posture. Having done all to stand, therefore... Why? Because he said the evil day will come. And when it comes to your doorstep, when Ahab went to Naboth and said, I want your vineyard, he said it's not for sale. Naboth didn't go looking for trouble. David didn't go looking for trouble as a little shepherd boy. Goliath said, send me out a man to fight me. See, the battle will come to you. Eve didn't go looking for the devil. The devil came looking for her. It's coming to us. But when it comes, you're to have on the whole armor of God to be able to do battle. Now, it's going to take many different forms because the Satan is transformed into an angel of light. And so we don't always know how it will come. But here's the key. When it comes and you know the truth, you will know you can't go that way. You can't do that. I, I, I've got to stand now. This, it, now it's at my doorstep. I, 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 can't, I can't digress. This, 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 now it's come to me. And, and so we don't know the, the exact form, time, or place, but it will come. The battle will come to you. And so you must be prepared for that. That's why Noah prepared an ark. The judgment was coming. It, it, it comes to us. See, the storms of life come to us. We don't run out here and want to get in a storm. They come to us. But we withstand the storm because we're anchored in Jesus Christ. So uh, we, 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 that's why you have to be your loins girded about with truth. 
the, the, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith. These are, these are the, the armaments, spiritual armaments. And you, you know, whatever the battle might be, and there's different types of battles, but as I said, seek the Lord. Stand fast in that liberty that, that Steve spoke of. Uh, Paul said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. The posture is take a stance. Just like a three-point stance in a, in a football lineman. He gets in that why He's getting ready for that opposition. And, and you know, that's why it's called defense and offense. we got to be ready to enter into the battle when it comes because it will come. And, and you build yourself up. As Jude said, verse 20, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God will build you up, and the Word of God will build you up to confront these things. Because, you know, I don't know what people think, but it, it's coming. All of this Obamacare is about the mark of the beast. It's about controlling us. Uh, the, it's, it's, it's right in front of us, all of this. Every day there's something more that encroaches our lives. Well, now you've got to do this to get this. Now you've got to have a driver's license. Now you've got to prove this, you know. And then yet all these illegal immigrants, and that's Bible prophecy. The foreigners, the, the aliens, they're, they're filling our land. They're taking our houses. The wells we've dug, they're taking them. Uh, you know, people, I think it was the state of Florida tried to pass a law that people that get uh, welfare benefits need to take a drug test. And the federal judge shot it down. But yet I pay for that, you pay for that, and yet they don't have to prove they're not doing drugs. But yet if you work a public job, they'll come in there and do a drug test on you. And your money that you earn pays for that. It's so convoluted and twisted. That's why we have got to pursue Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And anything else is, is going to be error. It's going to be error. Very well said, and, and and Steve, I was I was thinking about you when I said that initially. You know, you called it when everyone else was saying that there was a dust storm out uh, twenty miles, fifty miles, a hundred miles out there, and uh, you were saying, no, that's not a dust storm. That that's that, that's the enemy coming towards us, and uh, you know now they're now they've reached the the outer inner walls basically. So. And Pastor, you know, it, it, you explained it so eloquently how things are going. Um, but, but Steve, I got to tell you, man, uh, you've got, and I'm sure you look. If I feel like, uh, you know, boy, I, I don't want this job any anymore. Uh, you've got to be feeling a hundred times that. Well, I do, and the thing is, though, is I can't, I can't quit, okay, and I won't quit. I'm, I've said this before. I want to quit. I absolutely, and, when, and and then I always get this thing. Well, yeah, quitter. Yeah, when they've been at it for twenty years and nine thousand hours, nine whatever thousand hours, battling the the stuff. And, and can I say something, Doug? I thank God for friendship, like from you. And uh, obviously, I haven't known jo you know Joe that well, but I mean, Pastor Langford has been my friend, and I, I basically went through a time period. And I'm going to tell everybody this: everybody needs a right friend. And after choosing wrong friends, finally, in prayer, God said, "If you'll trust me, Steve, I'll give you better friends than you choose or pick for yourself." Once I turned that over, that's when God brought in some of the most amazing people to my life, and that's. That's, you know, where I'm at right now. But look, here's the thing, Doug. It's one thing to try and warn people, but what do I do now? And this is what I believe I said my ministry was changing. It's like I talked to Hawk today. Hawk said, Steve, how many more ways can I say it? How can I be any blunter, any sharper, any more pointed? And and the thing that, that I think that's interesting is, is that I've turned the corner now, and so has Hawk, where the only thing that's important, look, we were we were tasked with being, well, I was a watchman. Pastor Langford was, was basically tending the flock and the sheep that God had placed under his care. But God opened up to David his radio ministry, excuse me, radio ministry, and is also now opening up his television ministry. But the point is, is that there are so few 
that will stand up for Jesus. Listen, there's a lot of talk radio guys on talk radio, and they believe that that if you just get enough people to wake up, that somehow we'll take this country back politically. You've heard me say this, Doug. There is no political solution to spiritual rot or sin. That's right. That's right. There is, and, and when I see God bless America, you know, I'm going to get a bumper sticker made. Some of you may want to do it already, but get ready, America. God's getting ready to judge you. And and see, this is something that, that, that it would take a whole three-hour show just to explain to people what the holiness of God is. Listen, when I come to the Lord in prayer, I realize that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, but I'm also... I, you know, the devil makes sure I know, you know, every single sin, and I deal with the devil. I fight the devil, but I said, Lord, help. How do I fight your people that I'm trying to get out from under, you know, the steamroller, back to my thing, and they don't want to come out. They want to get crushed. And and basically, the Lord just says, you're on the radio, Steve, for the ones that have ears to hear. Now, since I've come on with you, Doug, we're around the world. I mean, and the numbers have gone phenomenal. So thank the Lord, I, I at least, you know, I'm a, I guess you'd say, uh, I recognize when God's hand is in something. And it's Pastor Langford's anointing. It's my anointing, and it's God, God gives it to us, okay? And people say, how, David, can you and Steve flow? I think, David, didn't, uh, didn't uh, your, your youngest daughter say, Dad, how can you guys go together like that and you don't talk to each other? It Wasn't it, Lorraine? Yes, it was. Yes, and see, so and, and and she's a young lady. God bless her. I know her. I, I haven't seen her since she was a, uh, yeah, a real young lady. But the point is, if a kid can see that, then I would hope God's kids would see that. And what we're trying to basically get across to everyone tonight is: look, there is power in the name of Jesus, and I, I this is how I would end tonight, Doug. There is hope in the name of Jesus. There is eternal life in the name of Jesus. There is absolute direction and guidance in the name of Jesus. And there will come a time when our provision will be provided solely by the miraculous intervention of Jesus. But if you don't stand up now, how can you stand later? And I quote that scripture to myself every day. Take heed, lest when you think you stand, you fall. And so basically, I choose to basically say, Lord, I have to, I have to rely on you. My mind is absolutely going 100 miles an hour, 24/7, and and somebody says, "Ah, oh, you just need to relax." Yeah, right. You see, the Bible says to the watchman, "Watchman, give your eyes no rest." Okay. Now, I would like to change that role and and talk to people about Jesus because I told Pastor Lang for this. I said, Pastor, I'm to the point where the only thing that counts now is getting as many people saved, because the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise, getting as many people to uh, be able to appropriate by faith the uh, provision of God's word, begin to hear his word, begin to hear his voice, and the Lord has the specific direction and guidance for everybody else. I'm, I'm like, David says, help, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. I say, help, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. And people say, gee, will you tell us what we should be doing? Yeah, my answer is, help, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. In other words, they have to say the same thing I'm saying, and we all have to come to Jesus. Jesus is capable, he's willing, he's able, but again, because of free will, he allows us sometimes, I think, to come to the end of our own efforts to realize we cannot save ourselves by our own efforts. We cannot protect ourselves from our own efforts. Well, we can in some respect, but you know what I'm saying, ultimately, eternally. And that basically we have to cultivate a relationship with him where, as the scripture says, the, he's a friend that abideth closer than a brother, you know? Wow. Well, uh, fantastic, uh, Steve. And i got to tell you, uh, we have to stand firm on our feet or we're going to be dying weak on our knees. And, and I think that to be true. Uh, Pastor and Steve, we've got about two and a half minutes of the program left. Pastor, any closing thoughts for tonight? You've touched a lot of hearts. I've got an email from South Africa. I've got an email from uh, Central America. They They love your message you and Steve, but any closing messages, Pastor? If they want to hear 30 more minutes and have got direct television or uh, Dish Network, we're getting ready to come on at midnight. The direct television would be Channel 376. Dish Network is 267. And I'm, I'm going to be speaking on the false uh, apostles 
I think it's the second portion tonight. The very things we're talking about will be on that program tonight. But uh, I just want to encourage people to read their Bibles. Read your Bible, for in the Scriptures is the key to eternal life. And and I want to thank Steve and, and Doug and you and Joe for, for allowing me the opportunity to minister the Word of God because it's through your venue uh, that this this is possible, and I, I thank you so very much for it, brethren. It's, it's our it's our pleasure, my brother Steve, my brother. God bless you. Thank you so much, both of you, for your time tonight. Good, good night, Doug. Good night, Joe. Good night, David. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Steve and Pastor Langford. We will see you Monday at regular time, and don't forget Tuesday we will be joined by V and Steve. So don't miss that. You guys have a safe weekend, and God bless you to all the mothers out there. Have a wonderful day tomorrow, and if you're not a mother, go see your mother. Have a good night.